to EGF SSBU. This is, gosh, this is the final week. This is week eight. The yeah. Ocho, we've made it. The end of our journey is within mm -hmm. sight for, for at least this season. I, I, don't know, I don't know if they call it a new season when it starts. But anyway, my name is Fang, joined by the lovely Doramgar. As always, we are here to present you with some hot collegiate smash action mm -hmm. here today on EGF SSBU. Uh, we got some nice schools today. We got DePaul University versus the University of Chicago. We've got Wichita State University versus Marquette University, Ryder University versus Manhattan College, and St. Peter's University versus Fairfield University. So for uh, for a lot of some of these schools, this is their last chance to really make something happen in terms of uh, points they're putting on the board. I actually want to check out the statistics real quick for each school to see if any school is missing any points uh, so far because this is it. This is the last chance, at mm -hmm. least for this season. Um, I have to say, DePaul's record so far has been absolutely fantastic. Like, really? Have they like, dropped how good are we talking? Week? They haven't dropped. I'm, they literally from they have not dropped a single week. Mm -hmm. So if I were the if I were the University of Colorado, I would be quaking in my boots right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Colorado, their record uh, from what I'm trying to see right now has been they they have put up a good fight. From what I've seen so far, uh, taking it over University of Hawaii, which I believe is huge. I believe Hawaii is like one of the best schools uh, in the league so far to date. However, it seems like uh, they have been struggling a little bit to get themselves back into good favor on the board. So hopefully we can see something today. If they can take it over to Paul, they will ruin that perfect streak they have had going on so far. I believe all the other schools on this list have at least won one from what I can remember, but we'll go through the stats as they come, uh, as they go for schools. I'm very, very excited to see the players from DePaul University. I don't think we've gotten to commentate them yet. Uh, so that should be DePaul. pretty awesome. I mean, honestly, the name is so familiar to me. Yeah. That, uh, I, I think we have, it was just like how many weeks ago and please, please, please link me the spreadsheet whenever. Uh, oh, I did, I put it in uh, live too. You did, thank you so much. Yeah. Much appreciated because I can also drop down my own analytics. Yeah. Uh, soon, TM. The numbers. The numbers. The numbers. Piece. Yeah. The numbers are very important. Mm -hmm. but yeah, Colorado also looking to be pretty good uh, thus far. They've got quite a few W's under their belt. Uh, last two weeks, they have W's on, over Wichita State University and a uh, forfeit victory over UConn. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm also checking to see what other schools they have uh, vanquished in their path to glory. Uh, they did take out St. John's University the week before that. Uh, got a forfeit win on Georgetown the week before that. Uh, week number three. Mm -hmm. Let's see what they did here. They fell to William and Mary. Um, and... Yeah, so honestly, their record has been pretty good. I believe they only have two losses under their belt, which is pretty good for an eight-week season where you have to fight some of the best players uh, in the collegiate scene out there. So... Um, we're looking to see this potentially might be a pretty close one, uh, but DePaul's definitely the favorite to going into this block right here. So I want to see what they're going to do, what they're going to pull out. Are they going to finish strong or are they going to crumble? Either way, if they have been winning consistently, I'm pretty sure they've nailed themselves a nice place uh, wherever in the season. I'm not sure how they they format this thing. Mm -hmm. Still, um, I think I think I'm pretty. I'm like I'm like 99. Doesn't it go into sure. a final bracket or something like that? Fantastic question. <laughs> Um, yep. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty sure it has something to do with the points. So either the points will define the winners or perhaps uh, the amount of points will go into something like seeding for some finals. But I don't think either of those are the case because this is the final week. So yeah, this, this might is the be, last one. This might, be, this might be the final one. This might be for um, all the marbles. From mm -hmm. what we know. Um, I'm curious to see if there's like a tally somewhere posted of like, all the points that they earned because that'd be interesting to look side by side yeah for sure and to see and to see how how well um each school has been doing but alas it does not seem as though that is currently made available to us perhaps it's an ssbu standings it is ah um hmm either way i think all the schools this week uh are here 
potentially, which is weird because like we're kind of getting towards finals week, if I recall correctly, right? Like mm -hmm. we're fastly approaching it. So yeah, well, I'm looking at the pulse points and they're just kind of killing it. They're like. murdering everyone else right now. Like it's insane how much of a lead. But Colorado mm -hmm. has been doing well themselves as well mm -hmm. uh, with their recent wins and stuff like that. So let's see what they're they're capable of this time around. I believe we're just getting the players mm -hmm. geared up. Interesting. So, uh, so like far. the calculating, like the amount of points that they earned and they're taking away the amount of like points that they've given to other schools. But th be that being said, we <laughs> will now have our first game of today. I'm so sorry. Okay. Talk to us about who we have. What do we got All going right. on? So currently we've got Horse E versus Matt Beach. My man just put in Twitch chat. He forgot to change his tag from Xbox 360 back to Mac Matt Beach. And uh, we are playing some slow motion smash right now. We're just getting a nice little romp uh, underwater from what it looks like. I have never seen this before in my life, to be honest. So Colorado, Listen, where's De De is DePaul, New Jersey? Smash Ultimate is the gift that never stops giving, man. <laughs> what, what is going on? Oh no. <laughs> Oh my gosh. This is weird. How far Please. how far are Chicago and um, Colorado from each other geographically? Probably deep.gov. That's that's the only explanation. Let's find out. Let's go I to have. Google Maps real quick and see the difference. <laughs> the Google Maps analytics on deck. Let's see it. Let's take a look oh, because no. Someone make sure check both of these boys should be checking their switches to make sure their wires are in. Are they uh, playing this out? There's no way they're there's playing no this out. There's no way. I I I refuse. I mean, no I mean way. just look at him go. He <laughs> keeps going with these A-Hugs. Gets the full stock. Really good lead. This is gonna be a lag test, I believe. Yeah. But holy moly. I'm you're right about like Smash Ultimate Online being the gift that doesn't stop giving because it like it always literally gives us something new that we just don't expect. I have seen all types of lag. I've seen um Oh, uh, that's one way to put it on. That's one way to put it. Aren't we the best? I, I, that's one way to to, to phrase it. <laughs> Joker, nice. <laughs> Literally, I've seen like games that are choppy, that stutter. I've seen games pause outright. We've been booted out of the lobby plenty of times as well. I have never seen an, a, a water level in Smash Bros before, a, a, a combat fighting water level. Like it wasn't even lagging. It just looks so was, smooth. It was, it was 120 frames per second. It was like someone was like, someone took the game, put it in editing software and like cracked the speed down just like a little They're bit. They're trying again. Try, oh, try again. Boy. Oh, no. We've never actually had a proper protocol from what I've seen for lag tests. So maybe they'll have to sub out another player or something like that for the for the lag to subside or something. Yeah. Let me look up a map of the United States real quick. The bath time theme also just ties us all together. It just... I don't know, man. I feel like every single time we just have a different experience. The bath time music is is uh, not making right, so matters much better. Illinois honestly. and Colorado are like two states away from each other, so it really shouldn't be like. It shouldn't be, but big, then know, again, Illinois and Colorado geographically are pretty big. Like Colorado is just like a giant rectangle, while Illinois is just like vibing under Wisconsin. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and they I are, mean, I guess, Midwestern states as well. I don't know how that goes. Looking at the timer is perhaps the most comical thing. Oh yeah, it doesn't. It's just, it's just like going at an uncomfortable pace. It's speeding up sometimes, slowing down. Oh man, this is I looking mean, a. Oh no, nah. <laughs> I was gonna say it's looking a little better. If I were, if I were either of these schools, I would probably sub out one player for another one. Um, man. That's what, what you, I would do. What do you even do here? What do we do? Uh, Sean, this wasn't, this wasn't the script. Yeah, no. This has never happened. There's no there's no precedent for this. So Normally, even if it was like awful, they would just like kind of try to play it out. But this... Oh! Oh! My, my man is playing on an Xbox 360 right now. So he may not have... He may, may not be equipped with the right set of tools for uh, th this, this match. <laughs> so... 
I don't know. We'll we'll see what they got, or what they're gonna change to. Uh, if they're gonna swap out players, or if they're just gonna control with somebody. I don't know. I would not play it out personally. I would advise heavily against doing so. If either of these schools value the points that they're gonna gain, also their mental health, that's probably important too. I'd say. Um, yeah, it is looking like. Um, we're gonna try having DePaul host and see if that's any better. Okay. Okay. Do, 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 do. Yeah, just a moment. We'll find that's true. We are broadcasting from New York right now. The good old, the good old Apple, the Big Apple. So. Yeah, but even then, it's yeah. like this, this shouldn't really be happening. Do, 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 um, do, 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 I don't suppose do. we have the lag test on deck, do we? I don't think Dell has it. That's unfortunate. Um, either way, let's just talk about this matchup a little bit um, before it happens. Hopefully, it, it happens. Does the stream people. switch have LAN? You bet your sweet bippy it does. It definitely, we definitely have LAN. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so. so let's talk about Mega Man Joker. How do so, you, what, are you, what are your thoughts on that? What are your feelings? Mega Man's just like kind of a weird character, I feel like. And jo Joker obviously is a pretty big coverall for a lot of matchups, being what most people argue to be a top three character in this game. Um, I think Rebels Guard works really, really well to deal with all of the projectiles. Like if Mega Man tries to chuck a saw blade or chucks leaf shield or does something else, I feel like Joker has the right set of tools to get in and also uh, deal with Mega Man's zoning as well. Close quarters can be a little stressful, probably, but that's just most characters versus Mega Man. Mm -hmm. um, I think the offstage game is pretty good for both characters, to be honest. I feel like both Mega Man and Joker are pretty good edge guarders. Uh, within their own right so yeah, I, being, I think... being, being able to just sort of throw down like a metal blade yeah uh, and intercept like either you know either the Arsene recovery or perhaps just the tether mm -hmm. um i think just having a nice slow moving projectile like that is going to be super useful yeah uh and also just being able to coincide that with downing i don't know just putting a bunch of stuff out there makes it all the more likely to hit a tether um, as it comes back up, I love how the chat is talking about uh, <laughs> cleaning up your room. Uh, oh, which one, me? Not, yeah, oh, you. Damn. And All then right. just not, they were just straight up not talking about Literally, mine. paper bag moment. Oh, boy. All right, so, all right. Can we have a fan cleaning his room stream? You can You can literally follow my channel at twitch.tv. Twitch.tv. I don't know slash. if I've been. Slash fan9s. You can drop a follow there to me if... I, we just hit 400 followers. If I hit 410 by tonight, I will do a cleaning my room stream. Literally, all of this is just for my anniversary. I have a bunch of gifts back there. I have a giant bag full of spicy snacks because my girlfriend loves spicy food. Uh, I've got literally all of the season 13 hot ones, so hot sauces in those cardboard boxes there. And the bag is just for snacks and stuff like that. But yeah, my room is a mess. Speaking of a mess, let's talk about this connection real quick. It's looking a lot better, which is oh, not a mess. Gamers, we have, we, this is playable. Fantastic. Um, here we are, game one between DePaul University and... Uh, All right, this is already looking way better. So maybe it was the, the hosting. Mm -hmm. I don't want to blame Dill because Dill's already under enough stress. <laughs> As is. Ooh, the jab lock. Okay, I'm not going to get anything off it. Another thing we failed to note, I feel like, is Joker's projectile game is also well. I feel like Joker just has such a solid move kit and that it's equipped to deal with and, and also display a bunch of different play styles. I feel like he can play Rushdown, he can play Campy given Gun, and Aha being fantastic projectiles. His edge gardening game is fantastic. I feel like people just kind of boil him down to being a very light character when they don't realize he has like so many great tools. Mm -hmm. He's quick. He can camp you. He can rush. He's you really down. dynamic. He can. He can. You know. He's. He can do everything. You know. Get. Yeah. Get. Get you a man's like Joker. He's really uh, well designed. I feel like. You know. Arsene mm -hmm. throws in that little Smash Brothers sprinkle. Ooh, but like. That gun movement was character. so good. Oh my gosh! Ooh. Almost intercepting that recovery a second time. Just went so deep off stage to get it. That up smash, of course, not going to be able to kill. It is battlefield after all. Um. Yeah, that's that's something like really good about Mega Man too. Like he's able to like ledge trap you all the way from like center stage. He's able to position himself under the platform in such a safe way. At that point, you're just better off trying to reset the situation rather than trying to fight your way off. And oh my goodness, 
All yeah, the way Matt, from across the stage. Matt Beach really holding it down right now. Just like staying very, very solid, not opening himself too much. He's alternating pellets and projectiles really, really well to kind of keep Horse E on his toes a little mm -hmm. bit. I, I gotta say, this edge guarding has been fantastic. Like I said, that back air being a fantastic edge guarding tool for Mega Man. I'm also digging the single pellets he's shooting off stage to kind of interrupt maybe a tether recovery or something like that. Because if you do interrupt Joker's tether, he kind of sinks pretty quickly and sometimes isn't able to, to snap back to ledge. Mm -hmm, definitely. Okay, now that's a Joku offstage without a double jump, but unfortunately Matt Beach was not able to capitalize in time. Hoysi able to still make it back on, gives up a little bit of stage, uh, just sort of, you know, says, hey, you can come back in. And you know what? Matt Beach was able to fight his way back in. I gotta say, if his actual last name is Beach, that's a pretty cool last name. Matt Beach sounds like the name it of flows like off a, the tongue. Yeah, it's All like right. a pop star name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my god, it's Matt Beach. <laughs> Well, wow, almost could have been getting off on the side of me there. That would have been really, really Ooh. cool. And sure, that's... Yeah, that's why I, I like guess... to see the Rebels Guard is such a good tool to deal with Crash Bomb as well as Mega Man's other projectiles. It can really help to build up that Arsene meter quite uh, quickly. That being said, Horsey seeming to struggle to finish his food a little bit. I'm loving Matt Beach's uh, shield play right now. Just really holding it down, trying not to get hit by Joker's confirms. Because if Joker really can't get that knockup, he does Ooh. tend to struggle a little bit to get that kill. Such a good side beat for coverage. Otherwise, that Metal Blade definitely looked like it was on course to intercept it. That backfield not going to kill quite yet. Mega Man at 193%. All Joker really needs to do is just breathe on him. Just needs to get a back throw. Just needs a back kill. Just needs any button um, at this point. But this is looking so dangerous. I, I feel like also uh, Horsey is like backing off every single time he has like Matt Beach corner. Yeah, know? that's true. My man is definitely resetting neutral. I feel like a little too much, and he's too scared to play close to uh, to Matt Beach. But how else are you going to net those kills as Joker? Lovely Arsene build up right there. Finally going to be netting that first stock off, and we're seeing the combo start up already. This is where Joker gets really, really scary. Matt Beach has to make uh, has to disable this Arsene quickly before he starts taking too much damage because Joker has that comeback factor, man. That persona mm -hmm. uh, helps in more ways than one. Yeah. Oh, wow. Rolling good into it, but not going to be eating any of those pellets. That could have been really, really big damage. And Holy C just overly committing to those dashes, just stuck in that animation for so long, not pressing any button. Um, I feel like, yeah, every single time, like, Matt Peach has been getting off the ledge, mostly for free. Uh, and you can't really be letting Mega Man do all that. Oh, boy. No, well, okay, I'm a little was... surprised that up tilt didn't connect. Yeah, up tilt pretty much lauded by many uh, Joker players as being his worst move, honestly. Ooh, that be gonna be said that Crash Bomber stalling him right there, just setting up perfectly for wow. the back air right there. Matt Beach gonna be taking that with the, with the two stock right there for game one. Making Mega Man look pretty cool, honestly. Make it making me want to play Mega Man. The last thing I need is to, to be trying out more characters, to be honest. Yeah, Mega Man's like, he's a, he's a character, like, when he really gets going, he gets going. Uh, he does, like, such a good job of interrupting, but I just feel like, I don't know, I just think Matt Peach's play overall this game just seemed so much more solid. He was yeah. capitalizing where he needed to. I feel like Quosi, uh was backing off and respecting Mega Man a little bit too much uh, when he was, like, the one in advantage. He uh, and as a result, for sure. Mm -hmm. Like he just didn't overcomplicate his game plan whatsoever. Just did what he had to yeah. do. You know, got those. You know, knew his kill, con knew his uh, win conditions really, really nicely. It seemed like Horsey didn't have as set of a game plan to of how to net the kills uh, as Matt Beach did. I feel like Matt Beach knew, hey, most of my kills are probably going to be off a of back air. I'll try to go for some of my other options here. But it seems like my man knows at least the fundamental basics of this matchup and how to get his kills. Yeah, absolutely. Also, this um, song. <laughs> Song. The song is, is kind of hype. Song's um, a bomb. And then after this, we're just going to have to go back to bath time. <laughs> no, no, can we no, keep shade, this? no shade to can bath we, time. What song is this? I want to keep this song. This song is a Wait, bop. Is it even stream safe? Because what, there's, like, there's like a handful of songs in Smash that. Oh, like, really? Yeah, like uh, they're, not, they're not happy about mother music being. Really? Mm -hmm. That's so whack. Come on, Etoy. I've been I've been hit with some copyright stuff. Yeah. I, I think it's like Final Fan. I I can't remember which ones it is off the top of my head, but uh, there are a handful of songs in Smash that are not allowed to be distributed via That's streaming. Black, man. And it's been like that, yeah. Ooh, I know the Dragon Quest ones. Yep. God bless. Anyways, game two. Um, I think I think Hoisey 
Uh, really just, you know what, like more than anything, I feel like they're pressing like a lot of movement options uh, when they have Matt Beach coined, I think, going into game two. Just, you know what, sometimes you don't have to press the stick, you know, sometimes you don't always have to be dashing back and forth and dash dancing and jumping. Uh, Matt Beach literally sat there watching Horsey dash dance sometimes and just ran up and hit him, you know? Uh, because, because people, I feel like people really don't talk enough about like how dashing can be really, really committal. Uh, you know, you don't have access to some of your defensive options. It's just something you, you it's just something you got to keep in mind, you know? <laughs> you just humming along. <laughs> Game number two, Holy C actually switching off to the Corlin. Uh, what are your thoughts? My thoughts on Corin? Oh my god. Dude, Corin Mega Man? Are you serious? Holy crap. Alright, so definitely, you know, Corin definitely a pretty rising character, I'd say, after her recent buffs and stuff like that. But I feel like Joker's just like the overall better pick, but maybe Horsey may be feeling a tad more comfortable. I think this character still does fine. You know, she's got the typical Fire Emblem Swordy range she can deal with. She's good at close quarters fighting. That pin can get her out of some sticky situations and maybe act as a little bit of a mix-up. But uh, I feel like Ho this is also a pretty fundamentally based character, and it seemed like Horsey's funnies were just a little bit lacking in comparison to Matt Beach's last game. So I want to see Horsey try to hold it down, try to mitigate as much space as possible. And most importantly, like you said last match, not back off uh, when they've got Matt Beach cornered. I feel like they keep giving up neutral and uh, are denying themselves of uh, prime punish opportunities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Like, like dude, I mean, again, they had the right idea that uh, at that point, Matt Beach was going to go super deep um, coming off of the corner and yet no capitalization, no whiff punish. They're letting Matt Beach get off the corner so, so consistently. Someone was... said Mateo de la Playa in the chat. I think that's perfect. Matt of the Beach <laughs> in Spanish. Ooh, and gets the downer of Corlin's course, course trajectory on the up. Be more predictable than you would think. Much more... Uh, you know, exploitable, especially if you have something to join it or the projectile. Go for it, baby girl. You know, it's a, it's a free punish more often than not. Yeah, but Matt Beach doing a really, really great job of just keeping uh, Horsey in the corner, just kind of overwhelming them with these pellets. We're seeing a lot more of an aggressive playstyle than we were last time, and I think that has something to do with the character change, maybe Corrin just having a little bit more range. If you can smother oh Corrin, it works goodness. a lot better. But just going to be letting that chainsaw arm just rip right through Matt Beach's first stock right there. We're going to be taking it to the second stock. Mm -hmm. Tries to get something started off of the up air, but unfortunately they were not able to land in time. They weren't able to follow up in time. Uh, I, I feel like they're missing like some of the follow-ups on some of and stuff because she, you know, can get some pretty cool links going. Oh yeah. Uh, so just She's like got some to... nice combos, mm -hmm. for real. I, I just think Horsey has to be like a little bit more mindful. Are they falling with the cereal? Um, are they rising with it? And just like pick, uh, you know, some of the more ideal options in that scenario. A little bit too early with the counter. They tried to counter that side B again. I am, I gotta say, I am liking um, the F smash usage at mid range from Horsey. Like, it's really good at just tearing through pellets. Like, it's at a range where pellets can't reach, but it's perfectly set up for the tipper right there. But Horsey gonna be excellently nailing that back here off stage right there. One of Korn's best edge guarding tools for sure right there. And actually gonna be seeing the first lead of this set so far in Horsey's favor, is what I would say if they didn't get hit by that flame blade. Yeah, right <laughs> is what you would say. It yeah, is what it immediately is. gets blown up by Korn. You know, you know, Mega Man, for all intents and purposes, I feel like he really definitely does not struggle to kill. Um, you know, he has Metal Blade to confirm and to back here, forward and back here, and up tilt and up, and pretty good smashes out of shield and really decent ledge trapping. So I, I just like the fact that, um, you know, Matt Peach is making the most out of all of that right now, almost getting F smashed again. That move, menacing. It will, it will kill you at a percent that you are never comfortable with. You're like, damn, that killed? I don't like that. Oh boy. All right, we're seeing some nice exchanges right there. This is getting kind of down to the wire right here. It seems like Matt Beach is finally being put on the back foot pretty consistently. I think that has something to do with the additional range that Corrin Ooh. is uh, kind of offering up here. And Holy we're just seeing Matt Beach. Mm -hmm. My bad, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, Holy he just barely misplaced that pin, which would have definitely been the thing to take the stock there. Yeah, we're seeing. Uh, 
My man's just having a tough time fighting out of the corner now, and I think Horsey's... Oh! Little bit of misty eye on that back air right there. That was so scary right there for both Horsey and Matt Beach. No legend invincibility. That's what I would say, actually. Perfectly time neutral. Get up. That up smash is not going to kill quite yet. The next hit is most definitely going to be able to take him in that back air. Oh, it is no. going to take it. Matt Beach. Getting only one point for the stock. Uh, for this game, excuse me, two points for the last game. Going to be taking it home with five points for DePaul University. What a clutch right there from Matt Beach. Like, it looked like everything was against him. And then once he found his way to the corner, my man just knew how to pick up the kills. Uh, kind of a, a little bit of a brazen uh, pin forward right there by Horse E. Trying yeah. to just get these kills with that chainsaw arm right there. But Matt Beach just staying so consistent, you know, not freaking out too much when he's stuck in the corner. Mega Man plays pretty well out of the corner, to be honest. Pellets are such a good linear tool that cover directly in front of uh, Mega Man really, really well. They're fantastic well. and dig up tools. They're yeah. quick. They're able to put a bunch of hitboxes in front of him. Unless your opponent already has, like, a pretty strong hitbox that can hit through all those already out. It's just going to immediately stop them into the tracks. It's, a, it's like a good way to say, hey, man. Um, I'm not a fan of what's happening right now. We're going to put a little pause on it. Um, but yeah, Horsey was definitely like so much more, I feel like a new element with Quan. They were able to get some stocks off a whole lot easier. Uh, I, I really wish they brought it out game one. Yeah. It, the thing is, I, Joker's not like a bad pick to lead off with. I just feel like you, the, the skill floor though for Joker, I got to say is definitely a little higher than maybe a character like Corrin, whose tools are a little bit more straightforward. I feel like Joker rewards a stronger set of fundies, I'd say. Like, I think Horsey put up a good effort, though. Uh, Matt Beach is going to be taking that pretty solidly right there. Mega Man's also kind of a weird character to fight against, just because, like, he's not very common, and you have to play against him, unlike most characters on the roster, just because Mega Man's game plan and toolkit is just a, is just a drastically mm -hmm. different set of tools than a lot of traditional zoners or perhaps other characters, because Mega Man can kind of do both. My man can scrap. He's got good tools and aerials that are very, very solid and have a pretty decent amount of range to them, along with some quick uh, projectiles that can combo into a lot of his own moves as well. And pellets are such good tempo interrupters. You really can't build solid momentum mm -hmm. against him uh, traditionally in a match. But so I like a really good showing from Horsey right there. I think the switch was very good, and it looked like he was a tad more comfortable with the Corrin. But yeah. Mm -hmm. So I see a couple of people in chat um, asking about how the point system works. So let's talk up a little Why bit about it. Mm -hmm. This is a modified crew battle format. So basically what we're going to have going on um, is five, uh, two schools with five players from each. And normally in a crew battle, you would have stock perseverance. You would have somebody wins. They would stay on until they run out of stocks. Not like this here. Uh, here, um, basically two people are going to play best out of three, giving them room for stage strikes and counter picks and, you know, all that jazz. Uh, and then for each stock they take, if they win a game, they get one point. And if you win the set, you get two points. So, uh, in this instance, for instance, in this instance, Matt Beach, uh, took two stocks, well, it was left with two stocks the first game, uh, was left with one stock the third game, and then won the whole thing. So they gained five points, two from the first game, one from the second game, and then two points for the set win. This song is so, I'm sorry, I'm just vibing to this song. This just, song is such a vibe. A what bit? is this song? I want to know. I've heard um, it before, I just don't know what it is. I think it's quite the bop, but it does definitely get a little bit repetitive. Can one of the can one of the people in chat tell me this song, please? We need the sauce. Give it sauce. Um, but yeah. Good so, first round though. Like I was very very mm -hmm. excited coming into this, and like I think both schools uh, have a lot of caliber behind them. To be honest, mm -hmm. you know I haven't commentated either of these. I think we may have commentated DePaul one time, uh, but you, you, University of Colorado I don't think we got to see yet. So I'm very very excited to see what both of these schools have to offer. Uh, that being said though, Matt Beach blowing a very very nice lead out right there for DePaul University. Uh, yep, Mega Man always a good game. character mm -hmm. to have under under your belt. Um, so we got ADR, I believe, and Slatty coming up next is what we saw. I think also these guys have alternated their uh, rosters because I remember the I remember like people a player players like Cookie and ADR from DePaul, but I think they mm -hmm. also had other players, which shows that they have a pro a pretty deep roster, which is really scary because if you like colleges are like really good skill concentrations. So like if you have like one solid set of players 
the depth of that college is probably going to be a lot deeper because those players are going to be constantly playing each other, getting better off of each other, mm -hmm. and they're just going to have a bunch of like a really stacked roster. So it's you know. That, that's kind of the beauty of college is that you get your own set little training ground where these players can grind off of each other and continually be their own improvement and just build off each other's habits, which is really, really sick to see. It's like its own little microcosm. It develops yeah. its own meta. I feel like definitely a lot of the gameplay quirks um, and like stylistic things kind of emerge from different schools, especially like it's, it's interesting to see like how players from these different colleges, from these different regions, um, I, I feel like they have like more similar with each other and then they're going up against a school that has like its own environment that has its own climate uh, going on. So that's always just exciting uh, to take a look at, I think. I'm, so, I'm just vibing. I'm just, just vibing. vibing, yeah. We're just, just, we're just vibing. waiting. We're just waiting for <laughs> the next people to jump into the arena. Um, but uh, I guess, oh, here they are. And we'll be ready to go in just a second. This should be, if everything is according to schedule, ADR up against Slatty. ADR playing Pac-Man and Slatty with the Pokemon trainer. Um, so I feel like immediately, like, Squirtle is going to be really, really important here. Squirtle just able to bridge the gap, able to just take up a good amount of space so quickly, uh, and then just kind of combo Pac-Man to infinity. So Pokemon Trainer versus Pac-Man. I'm, I'm glad to see the youth these days picking up some top tiers, some mm -hmm. high tier characters. I'm digging it. Just you know, pick a top tier, man. Pick a top you tier. Pick a character. Yes, for real. Don't don't put yourself through the pain unless you really enjoy the low tier you're playing. I think everyone should have a top tier on their roster because it'll help them play the game just a little bit better. You know, you won't have to stress as hard and restrict yourself because I feel like so many low tiers are very restricted in their game plan. But either way. Uh, is my man? Is my man's tag say Santa is real? It's dope. I can't read the tag, unfortunately. I think I think that might be a too political of a message to put on. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm so Twitch. sorry. Yeah, I don't know. If, I don't know if we can condone that, but Pac-Man starting to get a little something going. Uh, he definitely has like a lot of low percent stuff, which you really don't expect. Oh yeah. You know his forward, his straight. dash attack, his nail to finish. Uh, he can he can definitely do some stuff. Getting a little fancy with it, not able to get much off that hydrant there, um, but just like slowly waiting for. The oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, that the was so Santa smart. equals real. <laughs> yes, yeah, that, that was so smart. He jabbed the shield, and then shielded, baited the out of shield option, and was able to arguably do it with up B. I think that was a really smart play on Slatty's part. It, I gotta say, interesting characters coming out from both schools so far. Oh my god. That's perfect. Gosh. Yeah, there, there are situations where literally that forward air has such low knockback that it can set up into an F smash situation if you miss the tech. You have to be so careful against Pac-Man mm -hmm. because my man is a freestyle trap character. He can he, he can kind of mix up his game plan. He doesn't just have to rely on those fruits a lot of times. He's got fantastic frame data to scrap with as well. That fair, the nair, literally all of his aerials are so, so good. I but think sliding. Ivy might be the Mon to use in this scenario as well. Squirtle might have a little bit of a difficult time getting in past this wall of projectiles right here. He is, you know, very, very small, but... I would, I would say the opposite. I think I think Squirtle has, like, all the mobility that he needs to be able to break through those projectiles. And then Ivy's just going to do a really good job of closing it out. Maybe Charizard to hold down the corner, but, yeah. but I, I just feel like Slatty hasn't been able to play the game a little bit too much. Oh, able no. to get a nail to upbeat because the Hydrant actually coming in really clutch with that one. Wow. I feel like that's exactly Pac-Man's game plan, is literally just don't let you play the game. My man my man wants to make it as much of a single player game as possible. I love the air dodge up. I think uh, ADR realized that he would not be able to get the third bounce off the trampoline right there. Gonna be missing the camera, kind of messing with my man just a little bit right there. And we're, now we're on to last stock once again. Yeah, using the melon just for a little bit of coverage there, still able to get the hitbox of it. That move, man, being able to convert off of it feels so good because it's like slow moving and you can set up so many cool traps for it. But I need to find a way to get back onto the stage. I think surprisingly being able to feather from that point. Yeah, that was insane. That was the craziest set I've literally ever seen. I didn't know Ivy could do that. Okay, I like the back throw of the orange right there. The orange shoots in such a straight pattern that it's pretty. it literally just goes exactly straight from the direction you throw it in. 
Uh, and I like how he's trying to use the wall to bounce off to set it at more of an unpredictable angle. Slatty is going to have to be very, very careful with how he lands, but Zard is out right now, and we've seen Zard do some crazy stuff Zard and take some stock and some Zard crazy early percents. Oh, yeah. He, he, he's clutch he lizard. A, mm -hmm. He has a built-in game shug. Like, one good back <laughs> out, one good F smash, and that's going to be more than enough to take it. Slatty starting to fish for it a little bit. Uh, ADO needs to clean this up, otherwise this game could just snowball away from him so quickly. <gasps> that's going to be... The Ah, uh, tried to wait out the water maybe to give himself a little bit of a boost there. That would be uh, cool. Not quite though. And yeah, ADR has to be so careful getting out of this corner right here. One well-placed back air from Slatty's part could end it. My man's also got to be careful he doesn't get hit by that up smash. Now this becomes a little trickier for Pac-Man because he doesn't have as many uh, tools to really uh, take out Charizard. Oh, what great! Attack. But he doesn't know what he jumps. He, he thought he had it. some jumps. Oh, no. Tragic. What an end. And Slatty, Slatty almost mounted that comeback, really. So that's, that's kind of the struggle for Pac-Man at certain percents, is that when he gets the, the opponent at pretty high of a percent and he can't really uh, do any more of his combos, he kind of has to rely on either One a fruit jump, trap or jump. something else. Yeah, he used up two of his ah. jumps. Like, I, saw, I saw both of them come out. Yeah. That's so unfortunate. Oh, <laughs> a little bit of an instant replay right there from beforehand. But yeah, ADR played that really, really solidly, and I think that fat lead that he established super early was enough to help him out. Really good uh, projectile usage throughout there, you know. Pac-Man ain't too easy to grasp. You have to really have a solid grasp on what all of the fruit does and the proper situation slash percents to use them in. And my man used them pretty dang mm -hmm. well, honestly. Pa Pac-Man's, like, all about finding your own setups, finding your own, like ways to position yourself around the stage it's just so that you can keep putting your opponent into uncomfortable positions uh because more than anything i think uh with pac-man it's impossible to know every single setup it's impossible to always know what he's looking for and so that's where your creativity as a player really really comes in why are the three people oh i guess it's the host yeah interesting huh um, but yeah, like with Pac-Man, you have to have your own personal creative setups and you always have to be ready to adapt and to mix those up and to always like have more, you know, things to throw out. Um, because as soon as the opponent adapts to, you know, like the handful of setups that you have, what do you even do? Your game plans kind of shut down, you know? So it's kind of a race of uh, adaptation, I feel like. All right, we're back into it though. Game numero dos right here. Okay, okay already the startups. Ah. Ooh, tries to go for the funny finisher though. Uh, <laughs> listen, head slidey the eye dab just a little bit differently, and that down air came out. That would have been the stock. Pac Man's down air. I don't know who programmed that move, but it's got it's got some ridiculous knockback even at like 15. Okay. Wow, that was the weirdest jab lock setup I've ever seen. Would it work? Um. ADR just applying the pressure really, really well. I, I just gotta say, ADR's like start off is always so, so good. He just knows like how to hold his advantage really, really nicely and not back off. Uh, I feel like Slatty though has to bring out some clutch. You know, PT being a very, very clutch character can get combos off really, really nicely and force lots of scary situations for the opponent. But it doesn't look like ADR is loosening his grip whatsoever on Slatty. Yeah, ADO, I have to say, uh, just like holding down the corner so well. Oh, I hate the entire oh interaction. Oh no, Slatty. That was highway robbery. You yeah, know, I guess the trampoline. I saw trampoline, that trampoline so... came out and I was, I was like, it's going to happen, isn't it? And it yeah. did. So for those of you who don't know, the more times that the trampoline is either hit or uh, someone lands on it, it decreases in color rather, or the amount of times you can bounce on it more and more. Once it turns red, uh, if you land on it, you get sent immediately into free fall and you're pretty much dead at that point. Uh, so that unfortunate combination right there actually nailed ADR that for a second. That's what I'm saying. Something about Slatty, man. He's got the clutch factor. He's just got the ability to take those stocks away when he needs it most. Ooh, okay. Ooh, gets a little bit of stage control. That back there, of course, on Zari. Not going to be able to take it quite yet. Tries to go through some setups there, but Slidey not going to be I taking like the bait either way. That's my favorite setup, man. Yeah, it's no good. I it's, love it, it's, too. It's incredible. I it, like just, it just looks so comical. It looks so goofy. 
I'm loving the flamethrowers from Slatty right here because it's the perfect way of keeping uh, ADR in the corner right there. And yeah, clutching out a, yet another kill right there. We're seeing the shoe completely on the other foot in comparison to the first game right here. As Slatty's just kind of running away with this one. Gonna get pelted by the orange right there and go down. We're seeing Squirtle come back out to start off the second stock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ADR is gonna have to pull a fast one if he really wants to clean this up because that early lead that Slatty established is just coming in so clutch right now. Uh, he's just really struggling to get anything going. It's honestly on such a tiny body like Squirtle. Pac-Man's foil loops and chains, it's, yeah, it's it's tough to get started at Bushoi. Oh boy. Okay though, a little bit of starter combos right here. This is really looking just so good for Slatty right now. Oh! And I speak it into existence. I speak the unfortunate event You've into manifested it. <laughs> oh no, Sean. Oh, oh my, my gosh. God. That up be almost killing, but oh, not, no, not quite again. yet. Every time, every time, both of them are off stage, and I see that trampoline come out. I, I I'm getting dog. palpitations. <laughs> Slatty, terrifying. Slatty doesn't want any of it at this point. Setting up a pet chase all the way from zero pace now with that. Wow, this should be it. Ah. All right, though, so ADR trying to get the momentum back. Going to be eating a fair for his troubles right now. This is so scary for him. It's just my man ADR has been struggling in the corner every time. I don't blame him. Zard is huge, and that tail is a perfect disjoint to uh, really keep someone trapped right there. No flamethrower this time coming out, though, from Slatty to keep him in the corner. And now ADR has got the control back. Who goes really, really deep for that edge code. Wanted it so bad. Still able to make it back. It is Pac-Man after all. But that eh? up throw will be enough to okay. take it absolutely that's that's quite literally a plot for an extension um, <laughs> um yeah wow slatty able to come back uh despite you know sort of sd'ing that second stock adr bringing it really really closely after that unfortunate mishap the first stock man the, the, both of them kept going off stage with trampoline out there i was i was genuinely uncomfortable yeah that that looked uh <laughs> that looked scary that first stock really was just so unfortunate, but it really set the momentum uh, right there for Slatty that entire time. We're brought into our, our first game three so far. I mean, this is only set two, but man, what what sets these have been so far, Dara? Both of these schools have some pretty nice characters uh, and players up their sleeve on their rosters right now. Mm -hmm, definitely. I think I think Slatty's just looking so much more solid this game. They seem much more oh, yeah. comfortable in what they're doing. I think they've made like some really, really good adjustments, be it in spacing or be it in neutral, or knowing when to capitalize on Pac-Man. Uh, and honestly, I really couldn't tell you who's favorite to win game three right now. This looks extremely even. Oh, boy. Yeah, just just look at these. Oh, that was so crazy. I cannot believe that. <laughs> the, the withdrawal right there, like really, or was that rapid spin? I forgot what that move is actually called. I think it's called one withdrawal. of those. Yeah. Uh, but that was, the most, I thought after that SD, the momentum was just going to be killed full on. Yeah, and also just like I think I think even when ADR SD'd, I think Slidey did a phenomenal job of holding on to that stock as long as possible until they were able to establish a lead. Uh, in addition to that, you know. Oh yeah, for sure. All right, though we're seeing it going back into game number three right here, and mm -hmm. man, I it it just seems like the first stock really dictates the whole pace because both of these players seem to have some insane clutch factor, and there's also been a fair amount of SDs and cheese as well. You know, all, all the all the stuff you really value in a good old set of Smash Brothers. Ultimate. Mm -hmm. So game number three, you're gonna be gonna go right back to PS2. Um, and once again, Pac-Man doing what he does best, going to the corner and sets up Hydrant. Man. Oh boy. Name a more iconic duo. <laughs> <laughs> Name a more iconic duo than, uh, than PS2 and everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, uh, using the Hydrant just to cover the landing a little bit. Obviously, I mean, that's like really, really basic stuff, really important stuff they should be doing with Pac-Man. You're able to stall, you're able to put a big hitbox out there, uh, you're able to control the stage, you know, just setting up, making sure that Hydrant is available for you to use like that, so important. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, Hydrant is just such an important tool for, for kind of mitigating most characters neutral and setting up a lot of the traps that Pac-Man holds near and dear to them. Uh, 
That being said, though, this game looking a lot more even. Both these guys treating each other a little bit more delicately, I feel like we can see. Like, neither of them are really over committing too hard and trying to go for that crazy combo. But uh, Slatty managing to draw blood first, getting uh, ADR all the way to the ledge right now. This is looking so scary for him. How will he get out of this situation? Ooh, oh, he just gives it to him. No okay. idea. Yeah. Man, Slatty just, just it gave up. it to him. Mm -hmm. Slotty okay. said, Heal, you want the stage? You can have it. This yeah. time, though, with the dash back, tried to bait a preemptive ledge option, but was still a little bit too slow to be able to capitalize on it. Oh my god, did you see that down there still be able to connect onto the shield? <laughs> okay, I've never seen that before, actually. Seed bomb to stall in the air. That's actually insane. Or bullet seed, rather, to... Uh... The stall was, in the air because it was it intentional it wasn't but i feel like no ivy player ever hits that move intentionally uh i'm sure there's some practical use for it out somewhere but i feel like ivy just has so much better tools to use that people are already aware of but wouldn't hurt to see some experimentation on that mm -hmm. as a part of that right now idiot is playing a really really good keep away game just sort of slowly chipping away at this damage sort of trying to bring Slatty um, up to where he is, and Slatty not able to touch ADR in the slightest, getting a little bit too antsy with some of these approaches, but that extended hitbox on the back here, being able to connect with ADR. How is ADR going to get off this corner? Oh, wow. Okay, Slatty just going in right there with the claw, uh, and that's going to be giving a good lead right there. Still on Zard. Okay, switching off. I don't know. I guess just to get that start good startup damage right here, or just maybe push advantage a little bit. But honestly, I feel like uh, he could have used Zard's longevity in terms of Zard's uh, lifespan because of how heavy Zard is to really push and hold on to this first stock because if they give it up here, uh, the lead will be all for naught. I feel like Adio right now is really starting to fish a little teeny tiny bit. Uh, for this kill, we saw so many whiff death smashes, so many whiff attacks. Uh, it's becoming kind of apparent and Slatty's doing a good job of avoiding all of it. Yeah, I think the struggle here for Pac-Man is just at a mid-range. Uh, his, his tools really, like, Cherry is the fastest option he has really at mid-range to deal with most characters that can outrange him, like Ivysaur. Uh, but with characters that can kind of poke out Pac-Man and outrange him uh, in the scrap, in the CQC, uh, it's, it's a little harder for him to nail kills or get his neutral openings. Uh, mm -hmm. He really needs time to set up for a lot of his stuff, which is why a lot of Pac-Man players opt to run away most of the time and charge up their resources before gearing themselves up for the fight. Yep, absolutely. Um, right now, ADR once again has a stage, tries to go for something maybe a little bit greedy there. Uh, I don't even know if that would have been a significant stage spike at that point. Able to get the double forward, connect the down tilt, uh, and go super deep once again, committing off stage. I feel like every time though, that ADR always commits like that, and it happens quite often. Uh, Slatty hasn't been able to capitalize appropriately. Oh wow, the Vine Whip right there being very, very powerful to get ADR off stage right there. And again, we're seeing the same situation over and over and over again, Dara, where Slatty just switches to Zard. Really, the, the corner pressure lizard, I think is what we can call him at this point. Mm -hmm. Uh, just because he's been so good at just keeping ADR trapped in that corner, finally managing to make it out. But man, there's going to be a lot of work need needing to be done uh, before he can nail that stock right off. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know this is definitely Slatty stock to take, but Ovu commits off stage again and finds himself trying to get out of the corner against Pac-Man. How many times will they be in each other's ledge traps? Please, please hit each other. I'm begging you. That should be it. No, not quite. Oh, wow. Just a little bit too far to the left to be able to hit that top platform. What is Slatty going to do here? Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> get me out of here. <laughs> All right, though, back in the corner once again. Oh, could have been a prime opportunity for that fair there, but I'm seeing, I think we're seeing a little bit of nerves coming out from both of these players right now. Uh, it, it is pretty tense because this can pretty much, like, the second set can really determine the swing of uh, this entire format, as if you're going up 2-0 in sets in comparison wow. to your school, it really doesn't leave a huge margin uh, for the other school to make a comeback. But this is really, really important for DePaul right now, as well as the University of Colorado, because if they can clutch this out, they keep themselves in the fight really nicely. And just like that, Slatty was the first one to be able to take the stock here. Goes for Squirtle just for that burst option. I love that decision. And then immediately back onto Ivy Soil, but not even Ivy Soil is going to be heavy enough to live that hit. Wow, just kind of explodes for all intents and purposes. This is a pretty even game right now. Starting to finally get those Pac Man combos a little bit. Oh, Galaxian extensions. Ooh, baby, that's 75% straight up. That's oh, it. Holy crap. oh, no. No, turn up. Holy. Oh. 
ADR popped off where my man kept that clutch. It, it's like my man used Bide in Pokemon. He just took all the hits and then just unleashed at the most crucial moment. That string was incredible. That string was pretty incredible. Holy and then all he needed moly. was to catch one whipped button, one nervous antsy whiff button. Guest right was able to take the stock with an F smash at 75%. Wow. Oh my god. Uh, I guess is I guess real. To, I was I was about to say that. <laughs> Check Everybody no rad. The Christmas miracle. Check no rad right now. He oh is my. on the map. <laughs> explain explain this Santa deniers. <laughs> that was cracked. That was insane. My man literally just strung that that was the perfect Galaxian combo right there. Literally strung it perfectly. I think Slatty's nerves came out in full effect right there because mm -hmm. I think he got caught by the jump uh at that at that point. Can we I don't know if we get a replay on that right there. Just that, seeing that, uh, the whole Galaxian combo at the end right there. That Galaxian combo before. was super sick. So, you know, I'm oh I'm so God. like I've seen so many Pac-Man fairy loops in my life, but I have oh, never seen crazy. a Galaxian extension. Caught the rollback, caught the double jump right there, just covered literally yeah. everything. And as soon as they knew Slatty was going to whip a second time, just unleashing that F smash to take that stock. That was such a solid command of advantage right there from ADR. Just look at the slow-mo right here. Catching the double jump, Dara. If Slatty just air dodged out right there, I think they would have been fine or just neutral air dodge, but they were they were like, I have to get away from this guy and jumped right out of it. ADR just knew how to keep pressing the advantage. And that F smash is one of the strongest in the entire game. That was so good right there by ADR. Yeah, that was that was just really well played. That advantage was probably some of the most solid I've seen through in Pac-Man in, uh, in a fat minute, because guys, you really like, it's again, not a character that you would expect to have that kind of damage output so quickly and so much. But a Pac-Man with a Galaxian in hand is one of the most terrifying beasts, like like known to man. From Ledge especially, like everybody knows at this point, like if, if a Pac-Man is holding a, a Galaxian at Ledge and he's just hanging on, you you leave him alone. You go to the other side of the stage because he can do some just insane stuff with it. And ADO did. ADO kind of killed it. That was insane. That was honestly massive for DePaul right there. Like, it looked like their backs were against the wall in terms of that. But now they are up two sets on Colorado right now, which means if they can clutch out this third set right here, they pretty much have I pretty almost set their victory in stone uh, at that point of Skull Kid. I believe we're going to be having Skull Kid versus AIV next. If I recall correctly, I believe Skull Kid is a Nest player. Of course, there could be more than one Skull Kid mm -hmm. out there. But the Skull Kid I know is a very, very talented Nest player. Uh, I think based out of the Midwest, but I could be absolutely 100% wrong. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, there could always be more than one Skull Kid, so that would be uh, surprised. Yeah, it's, it sounds like a tag that multiple people um, would kind of have. I don't blame and... It's a cool character. He's, mm -hmm. he's a very cool character from my personal favorite uh, Zelda game in terms of story, even though I haven't played it or, or, or rather beaten it yet. Um, but def definitely like one of the coolest Zelda games out there. So I don't blame mm -hmm. him for the tag. I wonder what AIV stands for. <laughs> Should I? Probably something. Um, I mean, I, you know, you know me, guys, Probably guys. Something. For all, for the sake of transparency, I hope everybody who knows that both of us are NAS maids, uh, and we really like talking about NAS. In fact, there are very few people on earth who I think like NAS as much as I do. I'm just kidding. I, I hate him. I bully him. Um, I like it. So, so we're going to gush, and we're not biased or anything, just, but we're going to gush about Ness. We're, if anything, we're going to be more critical of, of mm -hmm. Ness play. I have a bit of a question for you Ness players. What's up? I thought you said just pick a top tier. He, uh, so, uh, I mean, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to do it with my secondary right now. Or rather, my co-main. Uh, we, uh, we said pick up a top tier, but like, Ness is special. Okay, I can't Ness put is, Ness, Ness down, but I can pick up a, a top tier. Sounds so. like what every low tier, mid tier player would say. But thanks for the input. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my man. homies hate Ness. I don't blame him. He's, I don't blame all y'all. He's a very annoying character to, to play against. But I feel like he is a very good skill check in terms of uh, your play in this game. Like mm -hmm. you, you can't really get away with mashing against him because he'll outmash you, and you have to have a pretty solid command of advantage to beat him. So. I think he he exists for the right reasons. So basically, if you lose to Ness, you are you're bad. bad. You're bad. You're a bad you're just, player if you lose to Ness. Just straight up awful. You're yep. poopy. Unless it's like a top 
Ness player, like Gak their best Ness. Then, yeah. You're, then, you're, then maybe you're yeah. probably just getting outplayed. But if you lose to a Ness that you think is worse than you, you're just you're just bad. You're a bad player. <laughs> so, um, but yeah. So if anything, we're going to be pretty critical of the Ness play we see, you know, which is I think good because. You know, I think an important thing to do for collegiate streams, since you really see all walks of skill, uh, is we, we are here to educate the masses, Dara. As people who are, mm -hmm. I'd say, a tad more invested in the competitive scene than some, because some college players literally just do college smash for fun. They don't do it because they have any competitive goals, really. God, I wish that do, would be. God, they're, I wish. They're a, I'm in too deep. They're a fish in a, in a, in a small pond at that point. So we are, we are here to educate you as well as entertain you so yeah but honestly i don't know if this both of these schools need the education at this point okay yeah so we are getting skull kid the nest player i knew i knew i recognized the tag and yeah i've seen this man grinding wi-fi tournaments quite a bit but ike is kind of a tricky matchup i feel like in essence for nest to deal with mm -hmm. Ness's advantage on ike is pretty good but ike's advantage on ness is also insane just given how much range he has his combos hit really hard he can kill ness pretty easily he doesn't struggle too much uh, so it's gonna be up to skull kid to kind of see how we can approach this sortie yeah, it's kind of like a matchup where like you really have to be careful uh, and try to catch Ike's jumps because that's what he does a lot, right? He jumps in a lot. It's going to be really difficult to try to catch landings uh, when he has such big disjoints. Skull Kid not able to anticipate the trajectory of the side B quite yet. He tries to go for the attack chase, is able to bait out the getup attack, gets a back throw for a little bit of stage. AIV able to fight his way out and that up is almost killing him. I think he thought it killed or something like that. Okay, I'm digging it. If you can go for the additional mental warfare, if you're winning, that's fine because it can it really does affect some players. You know, some players do let that get to them mm -hmm. uh, quite a bit. If anything, like you'll see an initial change if they note the taunt is anything more than being a taunt. I think the most important thing to be aware of when someone taunts you is that they're literally just pressing another button on their controller. That's Absolutely. literally it. It's just a button. It's just yep. a button, bro. How are you getting mad? Oh, but Skull him. Kid taking the first stock right there with the Nair. Looks mm -hmm. like those taunts are going to be all for naught thus far. Ooh, I really like the way that Skull Kid is landing and spacing the photo. It's pretty safe on shield the way that they're spacing it. Um, and I just like to throw out a big old hitbox in front of him. AIV definitely does not have the time to try to cover that with one of his own options. But Skull Kid, I have to say, getting a little bit greedy with some of these extensions, tries to keep going through fail into falling fail, which is uh, really difficult to connect. Because the trajectory doesn't line up. I think Town is actually hurting AIV thus far as a starter stage. It's really good for Ness because in this matchup, he'll be getting most of his kills off the side with either back air or an air or something like that, since uh, it's pretty difficult to land like a, a grab on Ike. Um, that being said, though, AIV going to be taking that first stock there. But yeah, my, my man Ike usually typically kills Ness off the top with up air or some other tool or, or just like a well-placed head guard. Right now, we're seeing some nice combos coming out of AIV. Mm -hmm. No double jump. Oh my, oh my god. god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That's 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 the classic Ness. You see you see somebody challenging a big old smash attack and you think to yourself, hmm, I could probably get there in time and beat it. Uh and and so he did. Wow. That upbeat buff for Ike was so crucial, I feel like, for a lot of matchups like this, because it, it literally it has so much knockback now that it almost it, it can give Ike stage control for pretty much for free if he hits it just even one. No matter what percent the opponent that. Right now, AIV kind of taking very, very dominant stage control right here. I mean, Skull Kid definitely just needs one more Nair, though, which is awesome. Definitely a little bit too slow to pull the trigger on that neutral uh, B. That up B should be able to take it. That move is absurdly it's powerful. So good. Patch. <laughs> uh, right now, Skull Kid is trying to do anything that he can to try to take out this stock. AIV pulling out this, uh, the game shark once again. He I wanted everything done with, okay, neutral air dodge. I should still be fine if he just recovers here, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. that should be a stock, though. Uh, yeah, but unfortunately, Skull Kid missing the dash forward before the neutral load. Woo! <gasps> oh, that is so important. Oh, boy. This, okay, this one should take it. But good drift from AIV. Is barely able to get around it. Still able to neutral get up past the yo-yo because of its positioning. This is I gotta say, a AIV been surviving quite a long time here, Ness. You know, the, you have to really know restraint against Ness a little bit to really get in on him. But the sword can do most of the work for you if you're careful. 
But man, Skull Kid just can't seem to net this kill right now. He's he, he's having a very difficult time catching AIV given how good that should quick be I can be. Yes, finally able to take the stock. 230%. That's some of the highest I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I live at period. Especially on okay. town of all stages, too. The side blast zones are pretty easy to reach. Mm hmm. Skull Kid, though, gonna have to find a crucial combo here. Catching this jump, he's gotta keep pressing his advantage here. You cannot let Ike have any breathing room off stage whatsoever. You just have to keep going against him. Just make sure you don't get counter edge guarded by that upbeat. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. And both these guys just looking for some way in right now. They're both at the door, but they, they can't seem to figure out how to open it. Right now, Skull Kid is just like desperately trying to get something started. Not able to get the tech chase, not able to look through the jab block there either. Uh, but AIV, despite having such an amazing lead, never mind. Yeah, no, Nair to up air, the classic. You Nair know. to up air. You have they to be careful. Funny. I think that's the scariest tool that Ness has to look out for, as well as a lot of other characters against Ike, but it's just it's so detrimental for Ness because he dies off the top so early to that super powerful up air. Mm -hmm. right there. And yeah, AIV just landing really solidly, picking his spots really well. A few jumps here or there, but honestly, Ike lives for so long that Ness really can't get anything substantial off of uh, like an up air right there mid stage. I think what I think the best advice you've given me in scenarios like that is going for Nair because it knocks back a little harder, can get you more stage control, uh, and it, you can follow up a little bit quick more quickly off of it than. Uh, uh, forward air. That being said, though, uh, pretty good game right there. AIV, Ooh. though, just being playing way more solidly and living a lot longer. It just didn't seem like Skull Kid, uh, Skull Kid was getting a little flustered and not really waiting mm -hmm. for the kill to come to him a lot of the time. He was kind of just trying to force that out with either poking with an up air or something like that. And there were a few flubs I saw with like yep. using PK fire in weird positions that kind of opened him up for a lot of damage uh, like because the trades for Ness are a lot less valuable than trades for Ike in this matchup, I feel like. Mm -hmm. I, I, I feel like um, also Skull Kid did a really good job of catching a lot of these jumps, uh, but instead of going through something that would lead into something else, like say an up air, for instance, when they have a hard read on AIV going in for the full hop, um, you know, they just kind of went through forward to get those presets where it really doesn't link into anything else. Um, and I also feel like the, there were plenty of edge guards that skull kid could have definitely gotten uh especially when it comes to trying to punish ike's upbeat uh pk fire does a phenomenal job of that oh yeah uh, you know if you're able to stop you, you just have to you have to listen for the sound cue and once that sound cue comes uh you know it's almost a guaranteed punish for ness so skull kid just has to like slightly adjust the timing you know just keep an eye out for uh, an ear out excuse me uh for the audio cue um and then be able to like get an edge guard on Ike every single time for it. I also think um, if Ike is, yeah, if Ike is forced to do up B, like, it's really, really important at that point to know how to kill him. And this is, it's his worst recovery tool mm -hmm. because you can get spiked at the top of it. PK Fire can catch it. Uh, even PK Flash can catch it if you, like, wait long enough in certain scenarios. Like, there are so many ways to, and with the Nest Dare buff, it comes out quicker than ever, so you don't have to be as, like, precise with timing it uh, because the dare is like two or three frames faster than before which is kind of important because you can get your spike out a lot more quickly uh so you just have to know how to do that and with uh an important thing to do is what uh Sone, a ike main from long island told me is that when he ike is forced to use quick draw off stage it's best to treat um pk thunder like a heat seeking missile where you use it to follow ike um as he's coming at you oh my god He's still just replaying this to like be disrespectful or so just like a genuine problem with the replay. Him whiffing that nair right there. Oh my god. Yeah. That was so it happens BM. sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, you using uh PK Thunder to follow Ike down while he's using quick draw is like super important to catch him mm -hmm. because it can, the t both the tail and the head can act as almost like a wall to prevent him from getting any further than he should be getting. They're both just incredibly useful. AIV though, able to start it off quite well. Good DI from Skull Kid, not able to fall into that forward air quite yet. I'm mean, already put on 41%. Sometimes you blink and it's like, wow, how did Ike just deal all of that damage from two swings? I think patience is quite important as well in this matchup because Ike just has, Ike has more range on Ness. Like that's just a fact. So my man doesn't really have too hard of a time ca catching Ness's jumps or anything like that. This is huge. 
When I tell you, I was terrified. No, oh, yeah. I was, I was, I was so scared. I thought I that was. My man was gonna be whisked away to the to the ether. Mm -hmm. I I feel like right now AIV has such a solid like way, like has a, such a solid idea of how Skull Kid will be landing and crossing up the shield. Oh yeah. I would like to see some punishes from that at some point. I feel like Skull Kid just consistently going through full hop forward, landing back out, landing neutral out, um, and that's like quite exploitable, especially after the fairy. If he just starts his jump a little bit early, he'd be able to get a nice solid punish on it. Okay, we're seeing the back throw come out right here into the PK Thunder. Just trying to keep uh, AIV up in the air. I'm liking I'm liking Skull Kid's approach this time around for sure a lot more. Just not getting his antsy for the kills, but my man has to watch out for getting caught by these nares because they open up so many opportunities for Ike. Yeah, definitely. Ooh, almost Ooh. intercepting with the PK firing. This should oh, be the stop, but a really nice out of shield option is exactly what you need though. So, uh, so a little explanation on that interaction. So what's going on though is well, Ness uh Ness basically has an active charging hitbox for 1.5 seconds on the yo-yo. Uh and then Ness can complete the rest of the uh you know smash charge as you would with any other smash attack. But the issue is after the 1.5 seconds, accounting for the shield stun that would transpire, um, there is no hitbox there. It's quite literally, do you have a hitbox to throw out in time? Because if you do, you can quite literally kill your opponent. And this is looking like a no-fly zone right now for Skulk. And every time he's attempted to jump at AIV, AIV has had the perfect option just to retort by drifting back ever so slightly. Like, yeah, I think AIV is perfectly aware that Ness does have to commit on his aerial drift if he, just because of how floaty he is. He, if he's going in with a fair, he has to fully commit. If he drags back even the slightest bit, he's going to get called out. And AIV has been drifting back just out of range of Ness, so he can get the punish while Skulk Kid can't even touch him. Like, that was so good on his part. Yeah, you know, I, I I feel like AIV right now is just so much more comfortable than Skull Kid's buttons. He's just basing himself so much better right now and punishing uh, Skull Kid on some of these whips. Like, look at that. That's exactly what I'm talking about. He saw the full hop order from Skull Kid. He preemptively full hop, waited for the back here, waited for the neutral, and was able to get the whip punish for it. And even though he didn't get so much out of that interaction, it just, like, shows that, you know, he is really, really... Uh, you know, good at adjusting and adapting what he needs to. Ooh, okay. Yeah, well said. I, I think that's you hit the nail on the head with that one, Dara. Because it, it, AIV just hasn't looked like he's been struggling at all to deal with any of Skull Kid's buttons uh, at all. Should be a... Uh oh, that should be a free kill. But with say. Skull Kid, no PK fire, no buttons to cover yeah. it at all. Just respected AIV. Yeah, no. You much. have to punish those. No. Ike doesn't give you a lot of chances. His frame dad is pretty generous with Nair, and that mm -hmm. doesn't really have enough end lag for Ness to get any solid punishes off. You can't really Nair it or anything like that unless the Ike spaces it really terribly. Um, and most Ikes have very, very good spacing from what I've noticed. So in that situation, you just have to take advantage of his disadvantage. Like Ike is a very solid character, but he does have his weak spots, as any, any character does in this game. Uh... But yeah, really solid gameplay from AIV. Just like looking like he's played Ness every day of his life, literally. Like he just did not let Skull Kid in whatsoever. Yeah, and, and to be fair, I do feel like Skull Kid was jumping a lot. Uh, that's not really what you want to be doing unless you have like a solid read. AIV adapted, started playing a lot more grounded, started playing a lot more out of shielding reactively, and just sort of waiting for Skull Kid to press those buttons. Uh, and then all of a sudden, just sort of stopped letting AIV jump in on him for free. Oh, excuse me, Skull Kid jumping on him for free. Uh, and as soon as and as soon as that happened, I feel like Skull Kid's entire game plan just sort of unraveled. Yeah, Skull Kid just looked a little too antsy. It, it I've, I've felt the pain that Skull Kid has definitely felt in this matchup many times. It just doesn't seem like there's any solid way to get in on Ike. And Ike is definitely one of those characters that can just take advantage of everything Ness struggles with, mm -hmm. which makes the matchup, I'd say, somewhat polarizing. Uh, but of course, other Ness players are able to approach that matchup differently. You have to slow it down. You yeah, have to slow it down. I agree. You know? I think Skull Kid was playing way too much into, hey, Ness has great aerials. Ness can combo in the air really, really nicely. I think just taking a more reserved approach, maybe using some of Ness's zoning tools just a little bit more, you know, or just backing off, allowing uh, AIV to get a little too comfortable with drifting inward and then really blowing him up for it. You know, this isn't one of those matchups where Ness can kind of just face roll the opponent. He has to play the opponent's game. Uh, but enough talk on that one. AIV going to be keeping 
uh, University of Colorado in the game right there with that solid victory, bringing the score to a uh, 9-6 right now, which is in no means insurmountable for Colorado. These next two sets are pretty much going to determine everything right here as we have Cookie versus Katsuji. I believe Cookie is a Palu player from what I recall. Hopefully I recall correctly. We've only com commentated DePaul, I believe, Fun. one time. It has been a fat minute, so I'm afraid yeah. I don't have the sauce I on agree. it either. But while we do wait for our next few people to jump into the arena, uh, I guess we can just run through a couple of quick little announcements. Guys, number one, first and foremost, you should be following EGF SSBU and e official EGF. Where um, on Tuesdays, normally we would be streaming this and all sorts of other events. Not really sure how it's going to be going through the rest of the months, but drop a follow. Doesn't really cost anything. Number two, you should go ahead and follow at House of 3000 on Twitter.com. They are the fantastic uh, folks behind the production that you see today. We have today joining us Dill from House of 3000. Yes, and then number three, uh, you should go and follow uh, Twitter.com slash fanines. Uh, that's my lovely co caster. And then if you are so inclined, you can also follow myself at Duram Go Smash. And with that being said, just as foretold, we are seeing, we are seeing the Palutena from Cookie and the Luigi from Katsuji. Oof. This is this is a tough one. For this Luigi. is a tough one for Luigi, man. Palu has fantastic zoning tools to keep Luigi away. The combo game is uh, the combo game is fantastic. With punish game is fantastic. Palu is just an overall extremely solid character to deal with Luigi, uh, both on and off stage because Auto Reticle is really really good at disrupting Luigi's side B. So uh, Katsuji is going to have to catch these landings and play extremely grounded and also extremely patiently. I feel like if he's going to hope to take out Cookie. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that, I did not like that interaction. Wow, Palutena's shield interacting with Luigi's down B is not something I really wanted to see today, but you know what, here we are. Uh, I mean, like, Cookie's just able to play a really good keep away game. Palutena has incredible movement, incredible mobility. Luigi, uh, uh, not so much that. So unless Katsuji, like, catches Cookie with him moves like that, uh, I, I, I don't see how Luigi touches Palu, period. Yeah, it's going to be tough for sure. Like, Luigi will just have to find the openings. It, it'll mostly be up to Cookie's error uh, to really not be trying to land. Oh, just barely missing that recovery right there. That's kind of massive. But yeah, I think it's going to be up to Katsuji to really just catch a lot of the errors on Cookie's part. Really good down B right there to get out, get another combo right there. Also, potentially maybe try to counter edge guard Palo if, if she's forced to recover from an angle where she can get two frames. You know, just do like a runoff jump up back air. That's it. Definitely. But Cookie getting a little too comfortable landing on that shield there. Up smash out of shield, of course. Uh, you know, one of the staples of Luigi. Right now, just covering the ledge a little bit. Really confident that the Zero would be able to connect into the down air. Uh, and as a result, they overcommit a little bit. So I'm already seeing some habits out of Katsuji. Uh, most importantly, the spot dodge habit. Oh, that's a death. What mm -hmm. incarnation did <laughs> happen there? Uh, but yeah, Katsuji seems to be spot dodging after every landing whiff they're doing, or just like rolling away. And if Cookie can pick up on that, it's going to become very bad. But Okay, really good awareness from Cookie right there. Not going for the second nair just in case uh, Katsuji tried to down B out of it. That could have cost Cookie's life. And in this format, stock gains are so important. They literally count for points. So if you can hold on to all three of your stocks and win a game, like, you're looking good. Yep, there is so much incentive here just to three stock your opponent, just to play as cleanly as you can. But Tsuji over committing to a dash attack, Cookie tries to go for the two frame with the up smash, who recognizes that they couldn't hold that for too long. Good timings with the double jumps just to be able to move around the zero. Is Katsuji able to get this ledge trap? What a good call out on the spot dodge. That was brilliant. Just going through the backflip just to psych Cookie out. Cookie was anticipating a back hit. And then Katsuji just goes out a long active special move. That was sick. That was really cool. Okay, oh. we're going to see the patented Luigi combo coming up. We're going to see a fat miss right there. No. Luigi. Not following the drift just well enough right there. Just uh, a little bit too slow on the execution of the yeah. up there, right? They were like one frame away, which is just so sad. Mm -hmm. Okay, though, I'm liking the parries out of Katsuji right now. I think parrying for Luigi is exceptionally important because it will allow him to punish a lot of landings really well. This is going to be a classic grab back throw. Let's see what the edge guard is going to be for Cookie. Opting to jump off when do Nair. I feel like you have to wait a little bit longer if you want to achieve that with Palu to catch yep. that up B. But Cookie is up a stock. Can't afford to play a little bit more confidently right now than uh, he would if he were on his last stock, per se. 
Wow, Katsuji just looking so uncomfortable right now. This should be the stop. That was it, yeah. That was able to get it, but still, air dodges through. Cookie taking game one with a 2-0 stock lead. I don't know. I just think they look so confident in this. This is Palutena on Pokemon Stadium 2. Mm -hmm. What else is there to say? Uh, she, she gets a hit. You know, you get exploded. She's one of the most prolific, edge, uh, you know, edge guarders in the game and ledge trappers. And then, like, having to come back against that. Yeah, that's She's just tough. official trapper. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's what she does. She's not just a battle rapper. <laughs> um, Is that a yeah. reference to something that I'm missing? Yeah, it's a future. Like... It's a future bar where he yeah, he basically insults other rappers by saying, "You're just a battle rapper. I'm an official trapper." I don't listen to future, so that just went Damn. completely off of my head. I wow. could tell that was going somewhere, but uh, I didn't. Know. <laughs> yeah, at least yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but Cookie, you know, showing the the dominance of Palu in this matchup, but also I feel like just kind of roughly outplaying Katsuji too. Katsuji, the openings that they did get were on their mix-ups alone, I'd say. Uh, it just seemed like Cookie had, you know, Cookie was playing two steps ahead of Katsuji and adapted really well. Like that, the first time they whiffed that Nair, uh, they learned immediately they had to wait a little bit longer to go for that second one. It's like really, really good stuff on Cookie's part for that adaptation. I have no clue what Katsuji is going to do here. This matchup is already pretty difficult. Maybe try to use some more fireballs or something to open up neutral mm -hmm. Cookie. Or just play a little bit more defensively to make Cookie whiff like Nairs or something else. Like Just catch Palu on her user error. There is counterplay there. She is a very solid character, but you, you can't beat her if the player is not using her tools in the proper way. Yep, definitely. Um, but I do, I do feel like Cookie was using all of Palo's tools in the proper way. Oh, yeah. Um, not, unless Katsuji is able to take Cookie to like a little teeny tiny stage where Palutena can't run and teleport away. Uh, I don't really know what, what the play is here, honestly. The play is to pray and then and also play better, I think. Just like really stay solid, take advantage of literally everything you can do against, um, Cookie, I think they weren't going off stage for enough two frames. That's super duper important. You have to force you force pretty much a tech situation for Palu at that point. Luigi can do jump up back air pretty reliably uh, without getting edge guarded since his vertical recovery is so fantastic. And Palu really can't trade with it if she tech. Um, mm -hmm. You have to take every little inch you can in a matchup like this uh, against And just run away with it. And that grab really should have been the stock. As oh, much yeah. as I hate to say yeah, that, that could have true. been the stock. You have to make sure you're hitting those. You know, if you, if you are failing at the one thing that Luigi does better than any other character, which is zero to deathing people, like, you're going to be struggling. You have to learn how to use the, the zero to death to your advantage. Well, I feel like we're seeing a lot of spot that just come out of Katsuji, and that might not necessarily be the best idea when you're fighting against Palu. You know, when you are fighting against things like Explosive Flame and Auto Reticle, which I have to say do a fantastic job of just calling out the spot dodge habit. Look at this cookie. It's a, uh, you know, playing a little bit of Bloons Tally defense right oh, now. Oh, man. <laughs> this is rough for Katsuji. My man, my man just can't seem to get into the club right now. Oh, wow. Just barely low profiling under that back. How's Cookie going to be able to get the edge guard? Commit so deep, dot gov. That could have ended really poorly. I will say, I think the stage might fare a little bit better uh, for Katsuji. It'll allow him to catch uh, Palo on the platforms a lot. It seems like Katsuji has been doing a great job of playing uh, as grounded as possible without mm -hmm. jumping up too much. He's uh, just been trying to shark landings as much as he can, which is pretty good for Luigi, honestly. Luigi can shark landings pretty nicely. Right now, Cookie trying to fish for that two flame and is able to get it. Palo is down till just out for so, so long. So good. Luigi's up beat, you know, it, it's predictable. It's yeah. when you, you have to hold that. It's true. Managing to get back aired right there uh, off of that, unfortunately. But now looking really, really good for Cookie. Also, this medley is a bop, I gotta say. If you haven't played Paper Mario Thousand Year Door, please emulate it on your computer or something. Like, it is such a fantastic game. It'll be like literally top five gaming experiences in your life. Ew! <laughs> Ew, did you see that? <laughs> I did not. Like the, the up air or counter animation got stuck above Palu, so as she was getting pummeled, her ethereal light above her was also just like shaken. Good DI on that down B, even on Battlefield, like being able to live that long is so surprising. Wow. That one though should be more than enough to take it. Down B is such a good tool to like, uh, you know, ledge trap people. It covers a lot too. Uh, so I want to see more patience <gasps> from Cookie on ledge to deal with that because Katsuji has been like, it is, it is a read essentially. I don't know what the frames are. 
on that move, but on Wi-Fi with three frames of latency lag, that is definitely a read that Katsuchi is going for every single time. So I feel like Cookie should be a little bit more patient on ledge. Uh, it's hard though, because once her invincibility wears off, Luigi down tilt is so quick, it can just pick you off. By the way, speaking of, I feel like Katsuji has made some phenomenal adjustments. They're actively oh, yeah. baiting out these explosive flames, crossing them up and punishing Cookie for each one. And this has been happening quite a bit. Cookie needs to be a little bit more conservative with the explosive flame usage in neutral. Um, otherwise, Katsuji is just going to be able to get a punish for it every single time. Ooh. And just like that, Katsuji, for the first time in the set so far, has a definitive lead through themselves. Cookie, if you get grabbed, just... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, 52, though, the being... The swag. Tragic. 52, still enough uh, to, I'd say, get something on the board, you know, kind of force Cookie to be a little bit more scared. Explosive flame. Yeah, Katsuji's just not <laughs> falling through any of it. It's a bit of an execution test right now. This should be the down tilt, wow. but it is not. It's the up yep. smash two flame instead. Cookie looked so confident, and they were still able to execute beautifully. Oh, there it goes. Uh-oh. Welcome, Wheel of Fortune. We're out here. Oh no, that was so unfortunate. Luckily, Katsuji having the awareness to save his jump right there, but getting caught on rolling out of the corner. I feel like that's such a bad habit for a lot of players. Uh, you have to just be, you just have to wait in the corner a little bit sometimes. Okay, this is gonna be big. <gasps> no, the slow poke reaction time. I, I really like the way that Katsuji sometimes is just like suddenly waiting. We saw this last game yeah. with, you know, like the, the flip, you know, like the jump back into the down B. Katsuji is really, really comfortable mixing that up. And honestly, I have to say, that's not something a lot of players are comfortable doing, yeah, even no. at high level. Being patient is very, very hard because... Oh, no way! Katsuji was all yeah. out right there on that uh, jump from ledge, hitting that ill down air. What a reaction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Katsuji, I, I, I have to... I have to agree with you, Dara. Like, that was just really good waiting on Katsuji's part, being a lot more patient, de definitely disrupting the tempo of Cookie a little bit because Cookie was taking advantage of Katsuji's whiffs a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. Katsuji was just waiting for his opportunity. Luigi in shield is still very, very scary to deal with because he does have up smash. He has a lot of other moves that he can deal with really quickly. And I love the patience exhibited right there by Katsuji. That was so good. And it, it helped him. It kept his team in the game right there. Uh, and it got him the W because this is really important for Katsuji. If he can take it, like he puts Colorado back in the game. Because if Cookie takes this, I I'm pretty sure the, the crew battle is pretty much stuffed at that point. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, it's it's getting so, so even. I'm, wait, which school is from which? Uh, so Ka I just Katsuji is from uh, Colorado, and I believe Cookie's from DePaul. Okay, I see. Yeah, well, this is exactly what Colorado needs right now. I feel like Katsuji has like such a good handle on Cookie as a player right now. They're getting all the right leads. They're baiting the explosive flames beautifully. It's going to be up to Cookie just to play a little bit less committal right now, I feel. Oh, yeah. I think just more of the same of what they did that uh, that last game right there. Just waiting, disrupting the tempo of Cookie, waiting for Cookie to whiff because they really really took the prime time that time to to utilize all their opportunities stayed grounded didn't you overuse their resources like their jump off stage too quickly like katsuji really reined it in and adapted super well and that's not hard to do when you only have pretty much one like competitive set to work with a day like it's some players need a lot of, well, a little more time to get themselves started and adapt at a, a, a to acquire adaptation against their opponent so Good on Katsuji for making those quick uh, adaptations. Now going on a arguably one of Palu's best stages, uh, mm -hmm. if not Palu's best stage, PS2. So it's, but it's, I've got to say this is also a fairly good stage for Luigi as well, given that the the lower ceiling, or rather the higher stage, in comparison to the lower ceiling, is better. Plus that zero to death and the combos Luigi can do on this stage are insane. That was a crazy conversion right there from Katsuji. Yeah, just able to tack on that damage so quickly and so easily has the great idea, but they hesitated a little bit too long. They didn't know if Cookie crossed them up or not. They thought all about it. Man, that really could have been such an explosive way to open up game one. Oh, uh, game three, excuse me. Okay, the air coming out right there from Cookie. Just tell it got to be, hey, man, get off me. But excellent up smash right there. Palu trying to jump out of shield right there as Palu doesn't really have the strongest out of shield game without a, uh, a jump option most of the time. So really good awareness on Katsuji's part, just waiting in shield right there and letting that up smash rip once he knew that Cookie was going to go for a jump. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt. Okay, now Cookie trying to get this uh, ledge trap is able to find one back. Are they going to be able to connect this down tilt? They are not. Good wait on Katsuji. They were just priming themselves to double jump. That could have been massive. 
You cannot afford to whiff explosive flames in mid-range against Luigi. My man will run up on you, shoot his plunger at you, and you're going to be taken to combo town. Mm -hmm. He oh, gets no. a fireball into the grab, but not able to actually set anything up off of it, unfortunately. Only 37% and a little bit of stage. Katsuji is looking so confident right now. He's just not getting hit. We're starting to see Cookie's game plan unravel just a little bit. I feel like they're getting very, very uncomfortable with when Katsuji is in close quarters. It seems like Cookie is more of a long-range Palu player. You know, you have to be comfortable with Palu to player in both ways, you know? You you need to have a woman who can do both. Who can fight up close and also outrange with auto reticle yeah. and, uh, and explosive play. Mostly auto reticle. I feel like you shouldn't really be using explosive flame in neutral. Only, like, over the ledge or something. I feel like Katsuji just needs to be a little bit more careful about the way that they're timing these zeros. Uh, I, I believe that they could be reactable based on the sound <gasps> of the teleport. Yes. Able to get the throw into the down B, not going to kill quite yet. That's like a bit of a like uh, execution check. Oh, you know, yeah. Like, you know how to DI this move? No? Congrats, you got an 80. Silly. Okay, I would have wanted to see down throw back air right there from Katsuji. I think this is the prime percent where Luigi's pretty much going to be netting that as a reliable kill tool. Considering, mm -hmm. look at Luigi's jump height. Like my man's got hops. My man, my man's on the basketball team for a reason. Oh, absolutely. I feel like Luigi's just like able to kind of match Palutena's, um, you know, Y acceleration with his. No jump um, on Kasuji you know, right now. It's huge for Cookie. Ooh. Oh no! I don't think they knew that there was no jump left. And yeah, that's gonna net uh, Katsuji that stock right there. That was huge. If you have Luigi without a jump, you go. That is right your now, time. If I were Katsuji, I'd be fishing through this grab because this grab could get me a killer. 70% pick and shoot, buddy. Good wait. Good stall right there. But we are on last stock. This is mm -hmm. all or nothing right now for Colorado. If Katsuji doesn't take this stock, it pretty much put uh, pretty much just puts Colorado out of the game. He needs to play out of his mind right now. Ooh, just barely trading. You have to be really, really cognizant of when you can actually convert off of your neutral. Your combo starters might not work at zero. You just need that extra little bit of frame advantage that like 5 or 10% gives you. Oh, no, this is a totally oh, even game. Man. Cookie does not want to touch the ground, and rightfully so. You do not want to be hitboxing with Luigi down there. It's, uh, it's not a good time. Yeah, this is stressful for both teams right now. Uh, this matters so much for to determine the momentum of the rest of this crew battle right here. Katsuji, though, just sharking for these landings quite a bit. Cookie uh, completely abandoning their game plan of using projectiles and opting just to go for more of an aggressive approach. They're being so, both players are being so, so careful with how they're moving out of shield right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, out of shield was definitely really, really big. Both of these players <gasps> are trying to time their out of shield options. Oh! Katsuji! <laughs> The right idea, but Dash attacks the wrong way, just gets out of there. Cookie sits in shield, says, I don't want any part of this at all. Bates the preemptive oh, no. option. No. Oh my god, that's so scary. <laughs> oh god. What is this game, man? Both players exhibiting a little bit of nervousness right here. Katsuji needs to find this landing right here, not get picked off by Cookie. The back air wall is set up once again. How is Katsuji going to get past this? Rolling into it twice. Definitely one of the most uncomfortable <gasps> positions to be in. Tries to go for the jab block, but unfortunately oh, no, just slightly it? misspaced. That's it. The spaghetti of both players right now. <gasps> Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Did Cookie pop off and pop out their switch? What? What happened? What happened? No. Oh my, my god. god. There's no way. Who did it? Who was the one that was responsible for this? Because I have had moments before where I have literally, like, won a, such a tense game or no. set, and I punch my desk, and the switch pops out of the dock and disconnects. Was it Matt? Who did it? What happened? What's the protocol here? Oh, oh no. my god. <laughs> oh, my god. That was the closest set ever. What happened? Did the lobby shut down? What happened, Dill? Oh my god. It's looking like the whole thing died. <laughs> I think somebody popped the switch out of a I socket. think the switch got popped out of the dock by someone, but who? Um. Oh, man. Let's, wow. Let's go back to that replay and see how close that was. Look, it's 88 to 98. That was down to the wire, literally.
Katsuji getting a little nervous right there. We saw the double roll in, missing the key punishes there, missed the punish off that explosive frame, rolling into Paolo right there, getting grabbed, and then the DC happened. My man was in the middle of recovering. There was no way the switch could have popped out of the dock. But what happened? I don't know who it could have been, literally. It could have been either of them. They have one and a half percent between them. Luigi oh my far off god. Stage. What happened? That was so crucial right I there. I hated you, man. I'm not exactly sure what's that, going on. Was that really ultimate Wi-Fi? Because the connection looked pretty crisp. <sighs> Holy shit. And we still have one more set. We're over schedule right now, Dara. We're, we're running late. <laughs> We're really late, yeah. yeah. We should have been starting the next school by now. Oh my god. It's just been such a close duel between both schools right here. This is crazy. This is going to suck either way because the momentum has been ripped out of both schools' sails at this point. They have to. I don't know what the protocol is for here. We're going to get an official TO ruling soon, but man. That was Dang. looking like Cookie's game at that point. Katsuji was kind of unraveling there, so... But uh, we're going to see, you know, these things do happen in a competitive setting, sadly. So we're going to see how these players deal with it. Man, oh, man. Wow. And the goddamn default music. Not again. No. Wow. The one's timing for you, too. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for joining us here at EGF SSBU. We still have uh, some crazy smash action. Man, Dara, this might be the best, literally the best collegiate set we've seen so far i'd say and then and then it just ended and then and it, it just it ended all the, that was so anticlimactic what the hell what happened i i need like a i need like a an analyst i need the pentagon's top cryptologist to tell me what exactly happened there what went on you're, you're asking me buddy I don't even know what to say after that, honestly. Jesus. By the way, guys, the fun Smash meme thing of the day is there's, I believe, an app out there that tells you what your MK Leo number is. If you entered a tournament, go ahead and check that thing out because it's pretty My funny. MK Leo number is four. Mine is three. I have, I have uh. an MK Leo number of three. It literally doesn't mean anything awesome, by the way. <laughs> it literally doesn't mean anything. It's just a fun little thing. If I were MKLeo, I'd probably feel flattered that someone developed an entire program around. I don't know. It feels it feels spiteful. It's like I mean, melee players have had the Armada number for a very long time now, so this is just like this is pretty unique. There is no lobby. Everyone's booted. Man, the sh the Shadow Men pulled. The Maybe we're getting another C and D from Nintendo. Yeah, they just stopped the stream right off the bat. is just playing. Stop Season playing our two. game online. <laughs> you know what, guys? Stop playing a game. Period. In fact, we don't we don't want you guys touch a good game. Oh no, I did mention fact. emulating TTYD. They were listening. The Nintendo Shadow Men are after us, Dara. I can hear them. I, I hear them knocking down my door right now to assassinate me, Dara. Please. Damn! Imagine going to a zoo, and then like just saying, "Hey, man, want to go take a look at the emus?" And then just like the Nintendo agent just like pops out of nowhere. <laughs> they just have all guns and stuff. And they just pop up. Code Red. We have a Code Red. Get him. Take him down. He said emu. And he's Dunsky's. He's Dunsky's just like that. Man. Free GF, yeah. Free GF. I hate that. Ooh, I don't like the way that that uh, place is going to sound. Hey, girlfriend. Come get him. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't have any updates as to the current state of the union. Yeah, the state of affairs right now is Nintendo. Up in the air, baby. <sighs> Nintendo Wi-Fi servers when they crash. Woo! Woo! That's what we're waiting for. That's what it's all about. Woo! Yeah, baby. Your impression's a little bit better than it should be, and that's it. Makes really me feel like you sat there. Don't it don't makes me feel like you sat there and you practiced it. You, you, I mean, you, you said it so many times. It might as well be practiced at this point. Practice makes perfect, gamers. Man, Nintendo when one of their arenas doesn't crash. Damn it! Damn! Why isn't this working? I'm just joking. They're trying their best, probably. Just, just a little goof. A little good. Just a little goof, Nintendo. Don't, don't come on. 
Don't come after me, please. You still haven't played TTYD? If you and if you like good RPGs, play it because it's literally one of the best RPGs in existence. I wouldn't know. I never really touched a paper Mario game in my life. Really? I'm a little. I'm a little zoomy, Sean. I'm a little. I'm a little. You should zoomy. try. I think you'd really love TTYD. Would I? Yeah. Do you like RPGs? You like Earthbound? Yeah, I do. I like so, RPGs a lot. Yeah, so definitely try it. Get. Do you have Dolphin? Get a, Sean, get a, play it on stream. Play it on stream. We don't, we don't say these words here. I'm sorry. I just want to yeah. listen that Paper Mario 1 is better than Thousand Year Door. That's what everyone says. I haven't played it yet. I want to play it. I think... I want to know what who I, everyone is, because I want your friends. <laughs> I've watched uh, uh, Stock Taker and Great Gonzalez, namely, have said that. Um, so, I watched a video from Gone great gonzalez on it and basically the argument is that both games are fantastic but paper mario 64 has a more consistent bite-sized experience mm -hmm. and the replayability is higher on that game um ttyd does have some low points but the high points literally blast it out of the water like it's so good so what's going on i think they'll be playing it for one stop uh, is that the scoop I can't believe we gotta play a one stock one stock against Luigi. Against this Luigi. sucks. This sucks because literally Cookie had him on the ropes, and then Nintendo said no. We're not doing it this way. So I don't know. I don't know how this is gonna go. But thank it's you all for joining one. us here today. I wonder what the if we're gonna run late today. If the schedule is just gonna do that, I don't know. I don't know what's happening anymore. If we run late, all my I'm marbles sure have be been fine. lost. They've all rolled off a cliff somewhere. I'm sure we'll be okay, and you'll matter the end result. That's true. Mhm. Mm I just hope the Luigi just grabs three seconds on it, zero to death. The power that I'm <laughs> I will lose. I will lose. Okay. So I remember this happened for a this? melee set. It was between Mewtwo King and. Uh, Ryan Ford and Mewtwo King argued something about the rule set or like Ryan Ford argued something about the rule set and they played a one stock game and literally I think the game started and, and then one of the one of them got like zero to death immediately and that was it it was a one stock game and then one of them just zero to death the other person and that was the whole game well, you have to consider that was Luigi in play that very There's well Luigi could happen play. yes so but yeah it's it would be really like funny it's looking like both sides agreed to play a one-stop rematch, so hopefully the arena is set to one-stop, and they're not going to start SDing, but we'll see. <laughs> it could happen. We have a very long timeout on our hands. So, we'll see. And this is really just bringing out all the tension, because like you guys have said, this match pretty much determines, like, if... Uh, DePaul takes this, they've pretty much won the battle. So this is just yeah, really exactly. maxing out the most important match of the series. For real. So far. That's the thing. It's like the way this format works is like it's basically like a giant best of five within a bunch of best of threes, if you think about it. Um, so 2 1 right now, this is like crucial. That's going to be like literally a. a that's going to be the first to three right there. And then the points are going to be so skewed that it's, the margin for error is going to be so tiny. But here we are here back we into are. it. Katsuji and Cookie back. Hope both of these guys have been staying warm or their mentality hasn't suffered. I think mentality is the most important thing at this juncture to deal with because it really determines how you feel, you know? Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, Cookie had him on the ropes. But if you're a good player, you can do it again, especially off of one stock. These two have adapted to each other enough to the point where it happens. You know, the momentum has been ripped out of their sails. which is just a, a battle of, of, of raw willpower at this point. Mm -hmm. And, and Kostaji, like, starting off with a couple of hits in the beginning. No zero to death, baby. Very tragic. Really unfortunate. Uh, but right now, for all intents and purposes, once again, this is an even game. Kostaji properly compensating for Cookie's distance. Okay, just opting <gasps> to land and try to oh reset. Oh, my God. I thought he was going to go for the up air at that point. The up B, yeah. The up, the up B, the, yeah. The down thing and the up B. That's the thing if you're really tight with it. And, oh, boy, it's uh, terrifying. Looking bad for Cookie right now. Katsuji already having him pretty consistently on the corner. Cookie's going to have to find an opening with maybe some back airs here and just play really safe. Not to open themselves <gasps> up. The no! wind box almost taking Katsuji uh, out right there. I was not a fan of what could have just transpired. Oh! It would have been so unfortunate. 
And that's it, guys. That's it. That's the game. GG's. Katsu G wins. You see you later. See it. You hate to see it, ladies and gentlemen. But yeah. if you're Colorado, you love to see it. We love to see it. We love it, Huey. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, Cookie just looked like they couldn't get started there at all, and I don't blame them. That was, that was rough. But we got a game yeah. now, Nara. We got a game now. This all comes down to both Ego and Ice. 11-10 uh, is the score right now. Literally, the score differential doesn't matter. It's whoever just takes the set. Whoever takes the set will nail them. Actually, is that true? What do you think about it? Yeah, no, that's that's literally. I don't think stocks matter at this point. It's literally just who wins. Because yeah, if you win the set, you get a guaranteed pivotal. two points. Mm -hmm. So no matter what what the difference is here, if one school wins a set over the other one, those two points gonna. And this is huge for Colorado. If they can take out DePaul, they will be the first school to draw blood from them well, this entire. It semester. is actually possible for their end with a tie. Really? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. If one person that. gets three stocked or something. Even if they came into this with an even score, there would be yeah. a possibility of a tie, depending on stocks taken. That's true. Oh, here it is, guys. Is check it? this out. Uh... Why'd you Why'd you say those we play, man? Oh man, oh, I'm not. <laughs> That's wow. so rough. Oh. Uh... Game of this oh. is this is this is what we play, you know. This is the game we have to deal with, you know. No matter what, I feel like it, no matter who won, no matter who won and how, this it would have been a very unsatisfying result. If I'm Cookie, I feel real bad right about now. That sucks. I'm sorry, man. Every everybody on the DePaul squad, give your boy Cookie a hug or something, or send him some virtual hugs. My man needs it. My man definitely needs it right now. That sucks. If I'm Katsuji, I'm just like, that sucks, man. I'm sorry. But in my head, I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Woo. Let's go. Ooh, yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. That's what I'm waiting for. That's what I'm talking about. You Woo. so quality. You actually really quality. Oh. Man, I'm, I, I, I feel the pain in my heart. Oh, Everybody from man. DePaul, I feel you guys right here. And then Thomas in the chat says, only winners get hugs. No, Damn. that is so cold. Damn, Shawty, okay. That is that is so unbelievably cold. Wow. Man. Damn. And with that being said, this is the final set of uh, University of Colorado, Colorado up against DePaul. I uh, just want to say thank you so much to everybody that has been here up until now, uh, supporting the schools, supporting the players. Really, really appreciate it. We will be wrapping it up with Ego up against Ice. Neither of these players would particularly ring a bell in my head. Um, so I'm curious to see who they play and how they do. Yeah, same here. Uh, I've never seen either of these players before. I think maybe we've seen Ego before, but... Again, University of Colorado's roster is completely new to me. So, yeah. Do, 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 do. The whole so, lobby if the whole lobby was closed, we weren't running the that's, lobby. That's Matt Beach's fault. So, everybody yell at Matt Beach. Yeah, we actually switched hosts for that yeah, one-stop rematch. Um, I forget. Whichever side... <laughs> I believe had the Peloton. I was like, "Hey, can we like switch hosts so that doesn't happen yeah. again? It'd be too tragic." Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be too tragic, and then an even bigger tragedy happened. <laughs> no good deed goes unpunished, as my that mom. That timing was perhaps as unfortunate as it could be. Yeah, for it real. was like, comical. You put that in any very competent pal's hands. Run off Nair Stop. on the side. Yeah, B. That's, that's pretty much free. It's over. That's an easy kill. Dill, can we switch to music plucks? And we've seen this Cookie has been able to hit it before. It's not my host. I think you can oh. still switch it if it's not your host. Oh, I can? Yeah, you have to go to the top right. There's a little music note, and then you can check it. Pogs. Look at that. This is how we know Dell doesn't play online. Yeah. Probably really good for the mental health, Yeah, I too. agree. How's your mental health, Dill? <laughs> it's pretty good. That's <laughs> good. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Nice, solid answer. That's how's a good series, Pretty good. I was so worried that it was going to be like, oh, I'm kind of in a dark place right now. I was like, oh, oh shit. <laughs> this one is so hype. I love targets. Yeah, melee target tested. Ooh, that's a good one. 
It's it goes so. I wish they brought hard. back unique target. Break the targets. I want to talk about my favorite thing about targets is misclicking targets. <laughs> If you know what I'm talking about. Just clicking targets. Um, I don't actually. Talk to me about that. We'll be there in just a moment. Thank you for providing the music for us while <laughs> we wait for the next one to queue up, Sean. Just can't stand the silence. It's too eerie. Mm-hmm. Have you ever played Smash Dead Silent before with no music yeah, playing? Yeah, that's stuck. how I play. It's that's awful. Play. It's like that's a how horror I play. game. Is literally Shut Luigi versus you becomes a horror game. Um, I'm not I, saying. I don't. Couldn't I don't have. That's kind of weird. I don't, are. I don't have music on my Switch. I have it. Like, you have music. Yeah, no, that's fine. As long as it's coming through off. somewhere. If you have music coming through somewhere. If you play this game, Dead no, Silent, you're actually Dead Silent. Fun. Dead Silent only with sound effects, but uh, <laughs> no music. No, no music. Yeah, you just get to hear Ness going PK file. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, for the entirety of it. I agree with chat. Break the targets needs to come back, and unique ones at that. Not this stupid throw a bomb at the targets type thing. Like legit unique maps designed for each character in the game. If Nintendo can dev- and make an entire garbage World of Light thing. They can totally afford to make unique break the targets for every character. Every day, I wake up punching the wall next to me that that is the story <laughs> mode that we got. I think of <laughs> Green and Pastures and Subspace Emissary, yeah. which in of itself was much more mid and retrospect than you would think, but it was fun. Even Melee Adventure in Classic mode, just given Melee's movement, were, was fun. Mm-hmm. Even though it was like very repetitive, it was still fun. <laughs> because there's still little Easter eggs they put in there, like Luigi suddenly I appearing, giant Kirby suddenly message. appearing. I have never seen this message before. Battle. What is this? Tell me they started already. It's so. a message that happens if they push start suddenly when you're changing the song. Oh. Because it takes All right, you out well, of the We'll get the report. We'll get the report afterwards. Again. I am so sorry. I can't help but feel like this is my fault. It's not your fault. I was we the didn't one get, that asked We're supposed for to wait music. for the streamer's cue to start, not the other way around. Facts. So if we're changing that music for good reason but either way hope you guys have been enjoying the stream thus far you can follow our you first of all drop a follow to official egf and egf ssbu on twitch for more hot collegiate smash action as well as collegiate esports in general um you can also drop a follow to our technical director here at house of 3000 uh house of 3000 on literally every platform you can think of uh if you've been joining dara's lovely casting you can follow her on Twitter.com slash Duramgar Smash. Mm-hmm. Also, Twitch.tv slash Duramgaria. That's Duramgar with an IA at the end. Uh, and also, YouTube.com Duramgar, maybe? I don't know. And Something if you've been like enjoying... that. I don't even know if I have a custom URL anymore. Yeah. And of course, you can be following Fank at Twitch.tv slash FanINS, Twitter.com slash FanINS, and YouTube.com slash FangPlays. I am, I was frozen for a second, goodness. Um, but yeah, Sean posts all sorts of fantastic content, and you should go and drop a follow or a sub. Why? Because it doesn't cost you anything, and I'll love you forever if you do so. Yeah. Uh, so you should, you should, you should really go and uh, and do that. And while we do wait for Ego and Nice to finish up Game One to give us the good points in the sauce, I just want to throw it out to chat, guys. Got a couple of reminders for you. Number one, keep yourselves nicely hydrated. I have here an absurdly massive bottle of water that I've been using to keep myself nice and quenched throughout the evening um and i'll be doing so uh for the entirety of all the games that we have today so keep yourselves hydrated and uh number two make sure to get up every now and then and stretch keep that blood pumping make sure your tendons are nice and loose stretch those fingies stretch those gamer hands so you don't develop any gameritis conditions like tendonitis because who oh, buddy that's uh that's not a pog time if i do say so myself so take care of yourselves and i'll love you forever this song is a vibe. <laughs> I love how I just be like going off on a whole spiel. Yeah, then in my head it's just break the target. <laughs> yeah. That's my personality. Essentially. That's how we play doubles too. We have we have the same exact kind of doubles dynamic as we do casting. But yeah, other than that, what's going on with you, Sean? What's happening in life? I'm with chilling. You? I've been I streaming know. a lot this week. I streamed literally for like six hours yesterday. I streamed a melee tournament, then an ultimate tournament, and then um, a little bit of Earthbound. And uh, also, I do streams every night 
uh, After Dark called Fang After Dark, where I literally just playing TF2 while shitting around with my friends and not really giving, like, not really being serious with, like, entertaining stream or whatever. Um, been working on more YouTube content, been working out, been playing Persona 5 a lot. Just trying to keep myself busy and occupied uh, in this time. And I've got to say, like, I've I've had such a blast lately just, like, working on myself, like, just really practicing stuff and, and trying to get better at stuff. Um, my anniversary is coming up pretty soon, which is really hype. I'm going to be celebrating six years with my girlfriend. So she's going to be coming down on Friday. It's going to be cool. How about you, Dar? You're back at school. What's going on? What's what's the, what's the word at school? Just finals, man. Just just getting That's ready rough. for finals in the next few weeks. You feeling okay uh, with your classes? Or... Maybe not. <laughs> yep. Are you enjoying uh, Compsai at, at the very least? I do, like, yeah. I have to cool. say, Compsai, kind of Pogsai. It's odd, um, right? Yeah. Co computer science, man. So much fun. So much creativity to it. If you're good at self-teaching yourself stuff, like which I think you already are because you've learned cooking, which I, I don't know who the hell taught you how to cook, but... Cool. Exactly. So, like, and, and at such a young age, like... I don't know. Oh, I, Sean, I all you do, all you do is butter me up like a little biscuit. I butter everyone you. up. I'm just like, I'm, I'm, you know, like, Adam Oh, so Eve. I'm not special. That's fine. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm just making you feel uncomfortable. For Yo, the thank, sake you, of it. Thank, thank you, Triforce. Love you, Sean. Guys. Thank you for the pogs in chat. Yeah, six years is a long time. Six Seriously. years. Wait, it's actually been that long? Yeah, I started oh dating goodness. I started dating my girlfriend in senior year of high school. Wow. And now I am 23 and graduated college. So, from, yeah, December 8th, 2014 to December 8th, 2020. That's actually really yeah. hype. I'm happy for you, Sean. Thank really, you. Really Thank you. I really appreciate it, too. It really, it really gives me a warm, fuzzy feeling uh, just to know that. Because, like, before, before <laughs> this is a little personal, but before I started dating her, I, like, literally didn't have, like, a stable, solid relationship. Like, my longest relationship before I started dating my current girlfriend was, like, three months. And, like, every other relationship before that was, like, a week or two. Like, it, it wasn't that long. So, like so we basically what you're saying is hold on to hope gamers hold on um, to hope yeah you can you will, you will find the one you know and if you can't if you're having trouble finding someone you know look inside yourself you know because a, a good thing that i heard is like if you're having trouble like first of all if you're caring too much i guess about getting someone to like you it can be detrimental because uh it looks a little desperate and also just like people will be will think that that's all you're about when in essence you're you have a lot going on beneath the surface like give yourself some credit you got to learn to love yourself before you can learn i i think the break else. the target's music is just really yeah, definitely complimenting it's definitely not helping with the mood at all <laughs> yeah it's like it's like hype i don't know it's encouraging it's like you can do this you yeah. got this you whether, can break those targets whether it's helping or not i'm definitely not changing the song again <laughs> i'm so sorry i feel responsible for this i'm the one that convinced uh, it's been a long game, by the way. Music. I gotta say. Yeah, they've been taking a fat minute. Oh, they finished uh, ice one with a one stock, and now we're waiting. So oh, the score this is huge. Is been updated oh. to eleven to eleven. You woo! Made woo! Woo! Oh, yeah, is, baby. This is set point right here. Yo, DePaul might draw blood today. If Colorado wins, you just know that Cookie Katsuji situation is going to be asterisk. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> for sure. Because yeah. it, it was literally up to whoever was in advantage during that last block. And it, whether Katsuji or Cookie was there, that really was the make or break moment. Because it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. The only hit that matters is literally the last hit. Because One... that's the hit that wins you the game. Mm -hmm. 100%. And now, going oh on. Oh my god. One, Hold on. Go! <laughs> Hold on. Every well... time. <laughs> can people just use the Sans body... And not just the head, please. <laughs> then again, I think the body is only for Gunner, if I recall correctly. This is, he is only a Gunner body, but you can put the head on anybody. Oh no! And that is not the start you want to see if you're uh, if you are ego. Oh, well, a tag like ego, I think, is super fitting considering the character that we have at oh, play yeah. here. Man, you know, you, you, the, me, bro, the me fighter is an avatar of you. Yeah. It is the reflection of your body. And the name, and too. The name is Base Sands. I feel like you guys have too much... You guys have too much food in it, man. <laughs> like, 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 Ultimate should not let you pick names, customize Vs. None of that. No creativity. You have moveset A, B, and C. Pick one. 
I gotta say, Ice looking very comfortable. You know, this is probably the, the scariest final boss you could put out against any player because pit players really do have a, a good command on neutral of their own. They, they literally thrive off of whiff punishing and like waiting for their opportunity a lot of the time. They don't really leave things up to chance most of the time. Uh, and Ice is doing a fantastic job thus far of really just keeping Ego out. I don't, me, me Brawler's weird because it also, you can command a strong sense of fundamentals, but then there are me Brawlers out there who literally seek to just race to the cheese. And then that can be kind of detrimental when you're up against a pit player who is used to getting cheesed out each and every day of his life. Yeah, and definitely. Oh, man. I mean, Ice is looking so comfortable. This is just really, really tough with Ego right now. What yeah. a good an exception on there. Recovery almost able to get that down in there on both of their behalves. And this is looking like where DePaul's roster cracked, it seems like. Uh, they had such a strong roster going into it and kept it very, very close. But Ego, for lack of a better term, is kind of getting molly whopped right now. I cannot believe that caught over the ledge. That was insane. Well, gotta say, Ego right now has definitely a mountain to climb. If they want to be able to make this back, they burn the jump, somehow just barely avoiding that down smash, living by a hill, but oh my gosh, are they gonna be able to make it back? They do, goes for the ledge trump, but that's the re-grab, no punish on the re-grab quite yet. The trumpet's coming in real hard, sounding the, the horns of victory yeah, potentially yeah. for Ice right here and, and Colorado. That's and it. that will be it. Colorado University going to be taking it over to Paul in a stunning upset like with an standing. asterisk. And yeah, Pitt, Pitt is, is is true with that one. He is definitely the, the last one standing on that one. Mm -hmm. Man, what a what an anticlimactic ending for DePaul. I feel like just after that last set, all the wind was ripped out of their sails. It just goes to show, man, having a strong, consistent roster of players will trump like having very high peaks because if your lows on your roster do not match your uh your highs it can it can really cause you to crack like what if another crew brings you to set five you know that that's where your best player should be at that point so what's interesting about that comment is colorado i believe actually had two subs that's insane actually yeah both uh slatty and katsuji were sub to players really okay it's actually really interesting. So yeah, just showing the depth of the roster right there. Colorado going to be ending their season on quite the high note, I got to say. Like, taking a set against a school who literally hasn't dropped a single set this entire league. Like, that's massive. But DePaul has a lot to be proud of as well, having a very impressive 7-1 to record for this season, uh, which is honestly insane. So really good stuff. Yeah. Man, that was a heartbreaker, wasn't it? That could have gone either yeah, way. Yeah, for sure. It, it, in the words of a video I've been quoting a lot of lately, it is what it is. So, 